All right, real quick. Boom. Can I pee real quick? Yeah, it's but do do this real quick insane. because we forgot the last podcast. Can you do this podcast? Is brought to you and powered by Sunday Cool, and yeah. then you do watch this or listen. This podcast brought to you and powered by. Yeah. Okay. Look in the camera. Whatever. Or whoever you can look at the sky. What do I want. say? Watch what? this or listen. All right. This podcast brought to you and powered by Sunday Cool. Watch this or listen. That was very good. Very good. Very good. Good job, Blurry. Blurry, All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching. We're going to be getting right back to Ninjas the Butterflies real quick. But want to show you uh, around and give you a little bit of a tour of what uh, we're doing here at Sunday Cool. So everyone's very hard at work. We're actually almost into our busy season. We got a lot of people over here chilling, quality control, making sure everything is as beautiful and remarkable as we want it to be. The, the better call, the cooler call right here, baby. Yes. And then after everything's done printing, we box everything up and then we ship it to you. 72 hour turnaround after art approval. That means as soon as your art is done, you say it's good to go. Within 72 hours, it's on its way to you. Come on, let's go inside. All right, this is our sales department over here. Art people right here, very talented art crew. And there's M. You'll meet the other um, 25 letters of the alphabet later. <laughs> See what Josh is up to. There he is. There he is, guys. Are you ready, to guess, to get back to the pod? Uh. What's it? <laughs> back to the show! I'm blown, dude. This like I'll whole day it. is a like a fever dream almost, but in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, like first, the most positive fever yeah. dream. <laughs> Did that? A super happy. Have you guys ever done two podcasts in one day? Yeah. Yeah. We did, we did three, three one time, ones. and the, the third one was terrible. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. It was like we were done. This yeah. is our first doing two in one day. That is true, isn't it? And it's hard. Yeah, you did need it. It's hard. Break. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll carry the your creative load, juices. Okay. Just kind of. We'll carry we'll the. Do <laughs> people enjoy the first? Did people enjoy the first one we were on? Was that? Was that? Oh, people one? loved it. They yeah. loved it. Yeah, it was awesome. They were like, they're psyched when we told the Patreon people that we're doing it again, and they're psyched. Hope we can deliver. Nate and I have one song and one song only. What is it? <laughs> Tell me. What? You guys, you guys are singing? Strength? We're gonna Five, skate. Six, we're gonna, seven, we're gonna skate to one song and one song <laughs> only. Yeah. It's provocative. Gets the people going. Gets the people going. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Nobody knows. What I gotta watch the you gotta make me a list of the movies that you know. Sometimes I'll quote movies to Nate. It's like my wife and and then he'll just be like or my wife will be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, I I sent my wife a tombstone gif. Last night, and she's like, "I don't know movies this is from, but it's funny." <laughs> <laughs> wow! Like, oh, I'll just quote movies that I know or I know shows that, that oh, Kelsey for sure has never seen. It's way more it's fun like, that way, and she just thinks I'm even more funny than I really am. Right? That or they're like, "You just sound mean." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like, "What is that sound to me?" <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps saying that. <laughs> Dude, I was telling people that I'm episode where he can't say that is like the greatest. <laughs> Oh, you really think you can go all day long? <laughs> you always left me satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Hey, there's probably a great episode to be done on uh, the episode where Jim sends all Dwight, the stuff from Future Dwight. Uh -huh. He was doing yeah. on time travel. Dude, so like, yeah, the yeah. office covered it. it Someone poisoned the, the coffee, coffee pot this morning. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's a fact. <laughs> so good. Man. You got the memory card in there? What? The memory card? Yeah. I'm just double checking. I, I, no, this, you're is good. A, this is the first. I'm looking at all the cameras because the light just turned into non tornadic. And yeah, it gets like yellow. A little, little blown out. Yeah, it's a little bright. Do you want to adjust it? Yeah. yeah, go for it. Dude, look at this guy's eyebrows. Wow. Real, real or not? Those are definitely not real. <laughs> it might be. I don't know. I've seen some grandpas like that. He seems a little young. I literally pulled out an eyebrow hair this morning. Because I was just shaving. Like, oh, the tops dude, of my congrats. Cheeks, yeah. And there was literally, I just saw this <laughs> dude, massive. Welcome. Just one, just massive. My grandpa used right to have those, bro. I got one. Of, I got a little hair that goes right out the end of my nose right here. Mm -hmm. I can't see it. My wife can see it, though. She lets yeah. it grow long enough, and she's like, I think it needs to go now. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Why did you tell <laughs> me, me now? walk around like. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'll, Kelsey will be like, you need to do your neck. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even see thing. it behind the beard or something, but yeah. I'll just have like yeah. long, just stray hairs here. Is there like a ceremony? Neck beard? It worked for Andrew Luck. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is brighter now than it was this morning. That's Nashville, See, baby. See, this is why we don't want to go to video right here. Dude, but if you're like gotta have an Andrew. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have an Andrew. Listen, Andrew. 
Yeah, maybe. I only yeah, dude, work there's, around there's no curtains. Glass doors. <laughs> there's no what you're talking about. There's no tent or you're curtains boy, on this boy, thing. Let's look at you, what Andrew. What do you do? So at night, you can just I'm see a showman. Look in. Right after this, we're gonna fix cars. Yeah, we are. We're gonna That's open our mechanic. Yeah, we are. We're gonna roll this up. Get the bay door. Bring it in. We're ready. Need your oil change? <laughs> talking to your mic again. Check. I'm here. Okay. I was. Are you gonna hold it like that the whole time? I think you should. Yes. He just likes to hold it. Are you sure you don't want a stand? Hand me a stand. Just, yeah, yeah, do the stand. Give this man a stand. I, you just post it up like this. I'm going to proudly stand up. Hey, remember when you brought those feet out in the first episode? <laughs> Andy? Show us okay, pictures sorry, of Sorry, this guy just looking. Yeah, he wants to be door. in the show. Just he was just like, look at me. Is that the maintenance like, guy? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it was. Probably like, what is this? Do you got more pictures of feet for Andy? He just He's has really a gun. looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, we got okay, plenty perfect. of feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll air drop. I'll air drop you. <laughs> that's all that's all patreon you're that's like all since our the last episode <laughs> part of me was like got a running thread that, of feet pictures just a guy standing at the door with a gun josh there's a guy with a gun <laughs> no there's not <laughs> oh <laughs> you're like, well we're getting robbed this will be quite the show turn it on turn the camera <laughs> yeah, start recording. Keep rolling, start recording. Rolling. do it i dare you <laughs> why are you robbing us be the i'm greatest just here show to the faces <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Wait, he's, he's on a flying drone. <laughs> Wait, this turned. This Where are you turned. from, Peru? <laughs> what? <laughs> no! hey, shout out! This made a hard turn. Look at you guys. Blurry's here. Are we Blurry starting? Is are we back good? And we're gonna get yeah, in. Yeah, we're like thirty minutes into hey it now. Uh, so perfect. Hey, uh, Blurry, Blurry is back. Is that is that the song for this week? I wish. No. That is the melody it's I pretty, created, though. Uh, that is yours. That's yeah. 80s. I've never heard I that one before. It. Actually, I coined it. Yeah. <laughs> We're in Nashville. I you had to think yesterday. about. You had to think about maybe cutting. That's getting that to someone to cut. Yeah, me and uh, me and Reba actually recorded in the studio <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> How's Reba Nashville. <laughs> Reba McIntyre. Yeah. <laughs> Name another Reba. Uh, Rebar. <laughs> Saint at James. Home Depot. <laughs> Mister Re- Reba Saint James. <laughs> Reba. Yeah, Reba Saint James. Is yeah. A good one. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I had a dog named Reba. You did. Did you? Yeah, she died. <laughs> Well, <laughs> what are the kind of good stories you have? What are the kind of uplifting <laughs> early? <laughs> did she did she die early? Did you was, No, she was like old old like two okay. or something. <laughs> it's a long life. Two or Chihuahua. Yeah, like long life. I forgot yeah. to feed her. Yeah. Well, uh yeah. Hmm. guys, thank you for coming uh, back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> we figured you guys came to us last time, so we'd come to you. It's yeah. Really, it's really thoughtful. We still made you guys drive quite a bit, but it's very thoughtful. It's fine. No. Not much. Nash Vegas, huh? Yeah, we're here. Mm. Smashville. That's what the hockey kids call it. <laughs> That's right. That's what they're all saying. Cool. That's what the kids are saying. <laughs> it's hey, hey, Smashville. You hear the news? <laughs> Smashville's a hit. That's just in. <laughs> I always, every time I hear the Nashville hockey team name, I'm like, we're still predators. <laughs> No, the or- Orlando's the same thing, right? Yeah, they the that was the team? arena football. No, the, the, team. Oh, the arena football yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, what are we doing? Yeah. I don't know. You think Chris Hansen shouldn't have retired? <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of work in yeah, NHL, exactly. right? Yeah, he should drop the puck every single. <laughs> that would be incredible. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> I'm here to catch. Why don't you have a seat? Why don't you have a seat before I drop this puck? <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why don't you have a seat? <laughs> Everyone in the arena, why don't you go ahead and take a seat. Sports names are. What are you doing here? Team names are getting more and more. Why do you have a six pack of beer to meet a twelve year old? The Guardians. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. You're going to hang out. It's just like, I, I think that's kind of a, a thing. Yeah. But also it's like more we, broad. We have a million things in the world and you settle on just such lame names sometimes. And it's like, yeah. you can create, you know, you can create words and animals too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, we have the jets. You could do an inanimate object if you wanted yeah, you could to. You do jello monster. You could do the Nashville lamps. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's yeah, like, just, I mean, you could do whatever you want. Or like hybrids. That. Why not a hybrid? I like yeah. the, the minor league baseball teams have centaur? The, the best Dude, that sports name. You mentioned that mascot? Yeah. A centaur like the bananas. Like that mascot? Yeah. The trash You're pandas. Like, Sir, no shirt. You're going to wear half a horse. There's like six, you gotta there's like six combos going on at once. <laughs> yeah, there is. Are we started? We haven't started. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're started quite a bit into it. <laughs> we're we're, in the, Great. we're nearly done at this point. <laughs> hey, if you're still right. listening, and congratulations. The next there's, 10 minutes will be on Patreon. Thanks for being here. <laughs> there's probably going to be stuff that is um, taken out. We're not. No. No. no, no, no. no, no. All right. Give we people all in. Give the people, they they people love it. People um, love it. Come on, Hoover. I don't know. Just, we, need, we need an official <laughs> start. Luke said some things. Oh, official start. Yeah, happens, questionable. Yeah. Like, yeah. like a like Andy a Andy has to flash some 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 body part, and then we then we start. That's Patreon. Yeah, like I that's said, Patreon. Night is young. <laughs> yes, I think you guys are using that wrong. <laughs> Dude, the sun's getting brighter. <laughs> I don't think that means what you think it means. Here it comes. Uh oh. Keep using that word. Is the sun getting brighter? 
Or, or the or, clouds just moving. <laughs> or is it just our vision in this world? You know? No, that's not it. You're gonna oh, people I mean, will yeah. argue about anything in your comment section. Have you? Hey, wait. Speaking of you guys, like like conspiracy theories. Have you seen the one I was reading about one today about how the world actually ended at the end of the Mayan calendar? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. we're all plugged into the simulation. Have you seen that? No, we oh. have a we have a similar something to that to where we're coming back from Miami, like a we're all three of us, and. Dude, it was like we almost died in a car wreck. We had the weirdest weekend. Oh, really head, weird. Head back from like an inter- on the interstate and literally like I'm sleeping I, in the I back went, seat. I went into the middle of the highway, spun around. 80 miles really? an hour. What happened? Just it was someone slammed on brakes and like oh, so chaos. But we have a theory that we died <laughs> at that moment. And all of this is just this is like lost because Bonus. that, that day some here. more crazy things happened that were like like life changing. Hey, you know what it's yeah. like? It's like the original Mario Kart when you got when you died, but you can still drive around. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> kind of what it was for you guys. Here we go. <laughs> so you could still play. and Everyone's like, just just end it already. Let's play another round. Come on. Uh, You're just still driving like you, you killed me. I don't <laughs> yeah, care. Does, exactly. I'm going to keep driving. <laughs> That was you guys. <laughs> He's been driving yeah. for thirty years. Yeah, it's weird. Yes, uh, everyone really knows. Kn- Kids not, don't even know this. Aged in four years too, <laughs> guys. <laughs> the original Ninja Turtles movie came out thirty-four years ago. Stop. The one with the uh, like the really cool suits. Yeah, the really cool with suits. The, the original yeah. Ninja Turtles with movie. Vanilla Ice with Casey Jones. Vanilla Ice was two. No, that it? was the second one. Yeah. Yeah, come on, Luke. Go Ninja. Just go Ninja. Luke, go. What, Luke, you weren't allowed to watch the original Ninja no, Turtles. No, dude, I did watch it. Come on. At my friend's house. <laughs> Rebellion. <laughs> yeah. See, Luke was the oldest child, so he he yeah. had, he was a trailblazer. I was the youngest, so they didn't care about me. Yeah. I'm like watching Stephen King movies, and I'm like six. <laughs> yeah. Right. Whatever. This is normal. I'm terrified. <laughs> I can't sleep now. I used to uh, watch the Rose Red miniseries that Stephen King did as a kid all the time. Yeah. It was like an eight part, super dark Stephen King series, and I'm like, you were neglected. <laughs> I suppose suppose it's because Bigfoot came after dad. He wasn't around. <laughs> That's true. And no one setting the example. Luke, Luke's watching Salty, like praise. Remember Salty? The, oh, the praise book. I watched McGee and Me. Okay. McGee oh, and me. Yeah, intro. Dude. My and God. I'm watching Pencil dude. Sharpener. Do you see Gate Expectations, bro. Yeah. Do you see the joke we made about Salty a couple yeah, weeks ago? I did. I did. We're like uh like kind of like we're like sl- where Christian celebrities are now from yeah. the nineties. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. like you remember Salty the Psalm book? Well, yeah. unfortunately he was ripped in half by one of the power teams <laughs> after after uh, after <laughs> they the you know team. thought it was a, a phone book. <laughs> power t- dude, the power team came to my dude, church, bro. Yeah, yeah. Salty was oh. creepy. It's this giant it like, was it, that's a fever yeah. dream for yeah. sure. Like, that's something weird. that like someone took. You never drugs seen that? And, like, no. Oh. remember Carmen's record though, Spirit Filled Pizza. Oh yeah. my word! Close. R.I.P. Man, Carmen's been gone for. A I ate years, up so. everything Carmen put out. Righteous Invasion of Truth was like one of my first concerts. Dude, he just he I sl- got he slapped one. There's of my some friends. people that are in the industry tell wild Carmen stories from like behind the scenes. Like, yeah, I guess he was just like off the rails, like a diva, <laughs> like wouldn't like crazy. I gotta get. I, we should do that one time. We should get. I was talking about this. Is somebody who was it was probably like me. old, no old Christian artist. No, wasn't you saying that? Like talking about old Carmen stories. Well, yeah, one of my friends was his tour manager. Maybe that. Maybe it was you. Yeah, oh. it was me. <laughs> oh, dude, let's yeah. go. I thought it was like one of the guys from like Newsboys. He, or he something. was wearing a shirt and had too many on un- too many buttons. That's what we're not this buttons. Is the story. <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? Okay, so it was on the tour bus, and uh, my buddy was like, he was tour managing another band, and. Uh, he he was just making jokes on against Carmen the whole time. It's just like little subtle jokes, but this one was questioning his sexuality. And uh, he walked on the tour bus and he said, "That's a few buttons too low there, Carmen." And he just walked over him seriously and just slapped him <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> nice. He walked to the back of the bus. They did not help the yeah, argument. They did not. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like an open hand <laughs> slap. Yeah, just slapped him. Finish that and conversation. Worked. And uh, I was on. I think I heard that story on tour with Reliant K. <laughs> they were telling like top ten Christian stories, and it was the best night ever. That would have been the best podcast. That's so fun. <laughs> Didn't happen. Should have recorded it, but. <laughs> All these Christian bands, man, all the like the real juicy stories from behind the scenes. It was yeah. pretty funny. Like we were we were dying to like four in the morning and we need a tell all podcast. We do. Oh yeah. We're not the ones to tell all, unfortunately. <laughs> mm. The best was uh do you remember the Christian band the W's? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember okay. the W's. They were like uh us they were not ska, they were swing. Christian yeah. swing band. Oh, what was their song? They were these guys were telling the story about how they were making fun of the W's. 
like in the lounge of the bus and then the curtain flies back and he's like and the bus driver's like shut up i was in that band <laughs> <laughs> And then pulled the curtain. It was like, <laughs> like this oh, guy's boy. definitely driving us off the road. <laughs> yeah. Man, not helping. That's the funny. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, you're making fun of that man. Yeah, the, I think the dr- like- your bus driver is in the band. That's you never know. You never know. <laughs> Don't you guys have a song? We should probably get it going. Yeah, yeah. You speaking want a song? Of, speaking of bands, <laughs> you're here for a speaking song. Of bands, I'm leaving after. Hey, I'm great. leaving. That was great. That's yeah. a transition. I'm leaving after the song. Um, Perfect. Uh, it's been a good show. We practiced this uh, last night. Yep. Let's go. And uh, not today, not today. So, we'll so see. <laughs> no. Hey, you know In what? Fact, I'm, I'm impressed. Anthony and Andy wrote the lyrics while you guys were still here. So oh, really, and we'll do some backup. Does it go, you blurry creatures? Are we? Go, are we doing you backup? Blurry Andy? creature. You'll fill it out. Yeah. All right. I'm here. All right. We need to do a blurry song with you guys next. We time. We should just put out a record. We need to do. Yeah, <laughs> we do a full record. No, we should. I would, dude. I would All honestly. I would do. That'd be so fun. Honestly. We should do a Christmas conspiracy record. Yeah, dude. And we do like the Christmas cheesy record infomercial is stuff. Beautiful. Like, oh, dude. Yeah. Do the full on like. Hey, <laughs> you know it's that time for the winter wonderland. It's that time of year, folks. <laughs> Billy Mays here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's getting cold outside. <laughs> you know it's gonna warm you up. Some wonderful conspiracy hits, <laughs> like Christmas under the chemtrail. <laughs> That's good. We just come up with so many. Oh Oh my god! Very good. All right. Mm. All right. It's not perfect, but me, 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 me. Do you want to? You want to make it perfect? Yeah, just make it. Just make it perfect, Andrew. Okay. Yeah. There's no rush. Everyone, shut up. (laughs) That's what she said. Shut up. (laughs) She was unkind. She was very unkind. Usually not sexual at all. Just rude in general. Just very rude. Oh. All I want for Christmas is. Was a JFK one there? Piece of my head. I want my head and my skull back. Uh, All I want for Christmas is my. <laughs> is Are you thinking C- of songs yeah, for this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not kill J- yeah, FK. Oh, dude, here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could do this. I'm telling you, You're you give me an it. idea, we can roll. Yeah, I think a Jingle Bell Rock. Dude, Andy and Anthony. I mean, they can write. Get Nate in your here socks too. off. I'm excited. Nate about writes this. a lot of love songs. No, I'm summer. serious. Mostly we songs need to make about this summer. record. This, yeah. would be, this would be hard for oh, you because yeah. all you write about is summer. And it's only on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. The thing they is, is we, could, about we could release snow? it. Oh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we could release a vinyl and then we, just, we do a drop on Spotify later on in the year or whatever. But like, it's a. Bro. Dude, it would, and it would be a fun project. It'd be super yeah. simple. I just want to write and play tambourine. I don't really have much more to add to that. But there was, when I was a kid, McDonald's sent vinyl records in the mail. In, in the Sunday paper one time for Christmas and they were singing Christmas carols yeah. and you won like a million bucks if they messed up in the vinyl. So everyone was playing this what? vinyl record from McDonald's. I still remember being like six, five, somewhere in there and we're all sat, you know, sitting around going, oh, and they got the vinyl and then if they, f- if, if they messed up, I think if they finished the song, you won a million dollars. But if they messed up, you didn't. So everyone's like, you know, and I, and I was thinking about now, like, it's a brilliant idea. Nobody, nobody would even know what we're talking about, like back then. But now vinyls make this huge comeback. Yeah, you yeah. can't even print vinyl now, and like it takes like four or five months to get vinyl now. If you, dude, what if you could do yeah. that though? What if you could do that in real life, and y- you just could change the stream once, but everybody had to listen to it until they until they found the song that, and so you get a couple million streams, <laughs> right, of, right, yeah, of, your, of, of your conspiracy. Gotcha. There's yeah. one in there. Yeah. Really good idea. Yeah. But uh, you play we, it backwards. We could do that. We could do that idea. So one of these vinyls will actually like, <laughs> and then you play it backwards. It t- tells you all the secrets. Exactly. Yeah. You, play it, you have to play it backwards <laughs> yeah. to make it work. Exact location. To make the songs yeah. make sense. This is where the Ark of the Covenant is. You have to walk backwards. Yeah. Let's do it. Are you ready? <clears throat> Maybe. We good? Here. All right. Let's go. You guys. That's not it. Oh, that was a good one, though. There it is. Yeah. So ask me if I'm ready again. You ready? ready? Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready yeah. again? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite pastime is playing Uno. I like to crochet tiny pillows My ex-girlfriend is a new model Some help 
working on my issues. Hikers walking around leaving trash and tissues. <laughs> Watching reruns on Steve or Blue's Cruise. <laughs> I wish we could be friends so I could miss you. <laughs> oh, big foot. I'm a glory creature. <laughs> Lost my first tooth when I was just a toddler <laughs> You and me are not so different <laughs> That's just my big tip for sex <laughs> Nope Good job, guys. Good job. There's, there's no rehearsal at all any of that. So. <laughs> I have to ask, dude. dude, I love it. I was wondering what the pedal was for. But here it is. It's for this. It's for this. I want to do a full pod like that one day. <laughs> wow. That was gorgeous. That's hard to play like this. <laughs> like a cello. Like a guitar yeah. up in front of this thing. I like it. So that was the voice of Bigfoot, everybody. Yeah. That is. Yeah. That's a, the voice that's of Bigfoot. Sounds. You've it's heard the Sierra sounds. This is the Nashville in. sounds. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And it's also our baseball that's team. That's a minor league <laughs> the, the Nashville sounds? Full yeah. circle. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Not a good not a good sports Not team. a good name. Once name. again. Name. No. Lamp is a better name. I know. I, I mean, but that. That or it's your... really good because you accidentally just said it. Right. I mean, <laughs> very logical. In reference to something else, Luke, okay? All right? It's, I have no issue with the sound. It seems so, kind of brilliant in that uh, way. There's actually. not a lot of people saying, like, oh, like mixing up Dallas Cowboys in like their middle sense. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good name. That's right. No one refers to Cowboys in Texas. The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Stop it. That's fair. Um, there was That's a fair. typo in the lyrics. Uh-huh. And it, it just it threw but me you off. You and Ron Burgundy, uh, and you no sang way. it anyway. It, I was like, I, everything's now confusing. <laughs> there's a question mark in there? <laughs> nothing. It. nothing I, I'm it, big should said foot. It, it should have said could. But it says child, and I'm like, well, that was, I yeah. said, <laughs> <laughs> not a child. <laughs> not a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are the Where are the children? My dream, my dream for this show is for us to have an actual band on the side that like all the cameras whip to, and we do those songs like a Jimmy Fallon. Dude, yeah. you used to have yeah. a house band. Yeah, That'd this be. is what's funny about like all the media now. It's like it's just it's going back to what it always was. Yeah, yeah. you have true. a studio, you have a channel. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's like Netflix is like all these people are doing like paid for channels now. And you're like, I'm just going to get subscribed to cable again. Right. Yeah. Because it's I can't pay for all these. these fees. Yeah. Here. It's getting too much. Now. So you're just going to end up being M- NBC mm-hmm. eventually. <sighs> you, I know, love- you know, what's not funny, though. What's what? Uh oh. <laughs> Andy's dad again. Oh, no. The question. The question. Today's question. Okay. Mm. That was sent in by a viewer. I doubt this seriously, but let's go with it. No, it was. <laughs> they it always was. are. We never know what's going to happen. Every single one. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Today's question. Listen to my viewer. That's a lot of, that's a lot of building. How does, he, how does he whip up the tears? That's a hard one. Was this was it sent in by a viewer? How yeah. do you whip up the tears? I, I can honestly say I did not see this coming. He just gets emotional sometimes. It's sometimes the questions just hit him a little hard. Yeah. We're here for yeah. you, dude. I didn't, I didn't see this coming. This I, didn't, I didn't hear any rumors of this. Seems very natural. Blindsided. Um, Some would say you're blindsided by this. Yeah. Good band. So today's question, cinema viewer, <sighs> did Helen Keller exist? Wow. Steve. Oh, geez. I don't know. I mean. Yeah. 
That is heavy. Golly, I understand why you were emotional about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would l- maybe let them. Yeah. What do you guys? Our guests, what do you, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I just feel bad. Like when I was in junior high, there was a whole yeah, cat- we, we, catalog of Helen Keller jokes. Yeah. <laughs> and I we, just we, remembered all of them. We keep it Helen Keller jokes? Can, can okay. you give me an example? I don't have no, never heard one can't. before. I mean, it was like the worst, <laughs> the worst time in junior high. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, it's like Stevie Wonder. You ever seen his yeah. wife? He hasn't. He hasn't either. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Do you think Helen Keller existed? <laughs> is that the name of this episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, it has to be like because the view- yeah, viewers. Were, this, this is what the viewers. The want. viewers. Yeah. Did Helen Keller? There's a lot of evidence that she did. Okay. Maybe. I mean, she thought people saw her. Okay. I don't know if they saw. Her. She didn't see them, but for Helen, the the writing was on the wall. For this stuff. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. good. That was good. Right. That's real good. Yeah. Let's see that one coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> not, Anthony, not now. She was kind of touchy. We're in the middle of a question, but you she, can't talk. So like yeah, yeah. She's a little bit of a groper. Ba- right ba- here, ba- basically, it's a it's a yes or no kind of thing. That's yeah. What we do. So yeah. so you say yes, she did exist. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> I don't believe her. Okay. All right. What about you, Nate? Uh, on the fence. I don't know. What year was this? I think like 2010 or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Helen Keller. That's a different yeah. one. Um, <laughs> well, did she not? Did she go to high school with her? Was that one earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. Th- honestly, I'm going to go on record. I don't think she did. All right. I don't think she did. It you doesn't know. make sense. She flew a plane. Apparently, she wrote books. I don't get it. I don't trust it. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. Amelia. And Earhart. I've never seen her. And she. I've hasn't. never met her. Nope. Nope. No. So. I, I mean, mean, by that logic, by that logic, yeah, I think the answer is pretty plain and clear. And if you guys agree, yeah, actually, that's a that's a good argument. Okay, yeah, then we all agree. So <laughs> no apparently, Helen, Helen, no Helen Keller, Keller didn't exist. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Did I say ninja? I meant butterfly. The butterfly is no doubt one of God's most ah! 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 empty mind. You were martial arts. Ha! There perfect. it is. That was perfect. We're like an hour into it. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're literally. <laughs> this is literally where we normally do the ad roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. That's but hilarious. This photo of her does look like AI. How many, look at it, cut are off you, her hands. Are Conveniently you, uh, cut off her hands. Are you, you mistaking Amelia Earhart with Helen Keller? No. No, I don't think no, so. Okay. No, no, no. But no, no. no Helen didn't. Keller literally. Of course I'm not. They're the same person. <laughs> yeah. So she didn't fly a plane. No, they. she did. They do, That's. She, they say they. she did at one point. That's, that's what she, they claim. She was, she she was, was kind of irresponsible. Come on. Seems but a little my irresponsible. question was like, <laughs> does she know that she was even flying a plane? No, someone just probably just was flying the plane and said she did. I don't think women should be allowed to fly planes. <laughs> Let's just be honest. No. Hot take, guys. <laughs> sounds like oh, a, that's what we sounds forgot. Sounds like a previous ninja. Blind episode. or not. <laughs> Dude, that's what we forgot to do. We were talking about getting some Nashville hot chicken and then asking you guys for a hot take, making you eat the chicken. Oh, oh dude, I could crush that, dude. That I like spicy food. That's that would be a great I can't She, in 1946, deaf, blind writer and activist, Wait, deaf and blind. <laughs> For what? <laughs> Helen Keller piloted a plane over the Mediterranean. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. That part's that. what's what's irresponsible. Prove it. Piloted? 250 not not a co-pilot. Said pilot. Right, yeah. That's the part that was irresponsible. That's like when both it teams was stopped Zephyr. playing and then they let the kid make the basket. <laughs> you just let him get behind the pilot. Just, yeah, let him fly a plane. You know what I mean? It's like there's simpler. There's, I mean, she didn't. They I mean, I'm put, sure it worked fine. They I put her know. in a wheelbarrow, and they're like, "You're flying over there." <laughs> <laughs> actually, that is so actually bad. Terrible. Careful. Yeah. Shake the wheelbarrow a little more. <laughs> Shake the wheelbarrow a little more. <laughs> That's terrible, Josh. Actually, terrible. How dare you, sir? <laughs> you just. <laughs> the funny thing is, if you said that to her, she wouldn't have heard you. <laughs> <laughs> this is man. This is bad. And this was the last broadcast of the Blurry Creatures. Yeah. Honestly, I think uh, I, not, I honestly think, think Helen of- Keller would have loved Ninjas of Butterflies. I don't <laughs> think the offendable audience can hear this. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? They've uh, already turned off. Fair. When, fair. when Justin Bieber said he went to Auschwitz, he went to Anne. Oh no, not Aunt Auschwitz. He went to Anne Frank's house, and, and said, then he said, "I'm pretty sure she would have been a believer." Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I'm then, like, yeah. dude, he no. got so much <laughs> yeah. flack from that. But I, I'll go on record: Helen Keller would have been a fan of Ninjas of Butterflies. I think so too. Yeah, she sure. would have been on Patreon. <laughs> we just have fun. I don't know how she would have consumed the media, but she would have loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No mm-hmm. one, no one's perfect. 
I we mean, should start producing our now. podcast in Braille. I hate That'd be wild. I wonder if that's ever happened. It seems like a niche market. I doubt, I doubt that's happened. Because you have to be deaf and blind to benefit from that technically because you can well, still no, listen. You can still listen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, They're you're working wrong. it out. Well, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> what, yeah. if you, what if you just did the show as a series of smells? <laughs> yeah, dude. We should have the first what? scented it's podcast. Stinky, what is the smell? Thing. <laughs> what is our smell? We should have a scented podcast. That should be the first. I don't know how it's possible. I mean, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. There's getting, sense through phones just, and tablets will like be 10% in the future. Of, I think you're just, you're, just, you're just talking about Willy Wonka, the movie. That's true. You, you guys are just lifting yeah. straight from the movie. I've never actually seen that movie. Really? Is that the one with the iceberg? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Oh, with the... You have seen I'm it. flying, Jack. No, that's like... I'm flying, Wonka. No, you're thinking Lion King. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was on Broadway. <laughs> Excuse me. We got a train track literally right And a here. tornado coming and through. And tornadoes. You know how yeah. you could tell that a train has been there? By the, the tracks. By the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know. That was the... I don't want to yeah, respond Yeah, because they that. left tracks. <laughs> but usually it's like, hey, you, you know how you could tell a, a train has been here before? It's because like, it left its tracks. Mm. How does it feel, guys, to do two podcasts in one day? Though? It's, it's hard. <laughs> it's very I'm, hard. But I, I haven't love it. said it, I mean, it's, it's fun. I haven't, I haven't said anything, but I'm struggling mentally just processing it all. It's good. It's a big day. So Luke, a lot Luke and I do it all parts. the time. Yeah, we do this a lot. Yeah. You just have to like, you just have to, you just have to think, get down in there, pull it out. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. We're, uh, we're growing from this. <laughs> we're maturing. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're just on. really we're, trying to start. We're learning yeah. and we've got a good story for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. We're going to tell it to you. You ready? Right. I'm be, ready. It'd be great if you said we got a great it. story we're not telling you. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not on this podcast, but we got yeah, a great story for you. We're going to set it up. up. Set it up. Aliens. <laughs> Roswell. Great setup. Other things. <laughs> Speaking you of guys have, you, guys, you guys must do this for a living because this is... All right, yeah. so so pro. You know, I was I was listening to this story, Luke, that we were, we, t- we were told the other day, a one-of-a-kind story of Roswell. And you know, there's been so many things that produced over the years about this event. Um, and lately, we've been kind of there. We've been talking w- about craft and the metals and crashes. So we've been emailing this guy for like three months. His um, the story goes, and, I'll, I'll, and fill me in on a help me with the details if I. Well, I was I, there for that interview too, so I remember it. I can help you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we weren't just talking. Well, no, about I just it. we were talking it. with the gentleman about it. Yeah. I just you've heard it twice, so yeah, you're yeah, I've yeah, heard it yeah. twice. So and then going back, making all the reels, it's kind of burned yeah. into your brain. Yeah. It's amazing how many things you can forget. Luke's like, we interviewed him last week. I'm like, we did? Who? Yeah. So that's, tell that's to them it. like they, because they okay. have no idea. Yeah. So this guy emails us. He's like, I, I got a great story for you. So his dad uh, goes on his Mormon mission to Roswell, New Mexico. Classic. Oh, right on. And he's a young kid. And uh, it's just a random place to go. He's from Ontario. So he's sending letters back to his family. And he meets this government trapper. His name's Paul Wasson. And he's kind of a lonely old guy. Doesn't want to convert to Mormonism. So he right just, away he says, nope, not interested. Yeah. <laughs> but you could come over and talk to me because I need some friends. So he makes friends with uh, this guy. And this is his dad, the guy that, that's on the show telling the stories. Like, it's all documented. I have all the letters. And my family saved them all for some reason. So one day, these Mormon guys are at his house. And he's like, I feel like I can trust you guys come back to my shed shows him all of his furs and then hands him this like 16 inch piece of metal and it's got these weird markings all over it and he's like that's not the weirdest part try to hit it with a sledgehammer so he said his dad was a young athletic guy and won a bunch of like just like top of his class and sports stuff starts kind of like the extreme mormons page ever seen yeah. that like where they're jumping their bikes this was that guy <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean if the power team was yeah. mormon yeah <laughs> They're, yeah. tearing, they're tearing phone books. and There's ties wouldn't stand a chance. They're right. Dude. Probably, those, those name tags pop right <laughs> off. Probably should pause and say not recommended if the guy's like, oh, I trust you. Come back to my shed. Yeah, yeah. Maybe don't. It's maybe a, stay in the main house. Maybe hey, that, maybe that no. year it was okay. That's when the best That's when the best things happen. <laughs> and this is 1970, by the way. Yeah, that's, I don't so know how, th- many, how many sheds have you been invited <laughs> back to? <laughs> that's 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 amazing several. stuff that's happens several. back here. I've seen it. It's a safe year. Safe year. If you go in a group, it's usually better. a great shed year. That was a great shed year. Never... Never go by yourself to a shed. Kids. But with other people, it's With fine. an old trapper. Yeah. 
So this is 1970, guys, and uh, <laughs> this guy Paul, you know, takes him back, shows him this piece of metal, and then they they try to destroy. They try to just dent this thing. So he hits it with a sledgehammer. Nothing. Doesn't make a dent. Whoa. Take an angle grinder to it, and it breaks the gr- the grinding wheel. And they take a file to it. Nothing. It won't. And it's light. So they're they're starting to freak out, and and he's just writing this in a letter and sends it back to his parents. It's kind of kind of an odd detail. So later, it's kind of a conspiracy. This guy Paul eventually sends it to a professor, and he analyzes it, and then he tells his friend who has this radio show, and he goes on the show and starts describing what he's got. This is in the seventies, and then he's disappeared. Comes back. And he said he found out that his house had been cleared out and the guy was MIA. The trapper? The trapper. No way. Yeah. Well, what you, what you kind of skipped over was is that the reason this relates, this is in Roswell, is that this oh, this trapper was a government trapper. So he's out yeah. essentially trapping animals that are that are non-native that are or or overpopulated. And in the back country of New Mexico, he comes across this this piece of this odd piece of metal hmm. and holds on to it for at this point, because like Roswell happens in the forties, is this is Almost, almost 30 years later and you know and, and so he kind of had this little this oddity that once he trusted these folks he decided he would show them and and then as nate said the weird the weirdest part after uh, about this is that you know after this guy sort of goes on this radio show and talks about having a piece of what he believes to be the roswell crash because of the properties of this this odd metal he just is he's disappeared um and it sounds fantastical, but then you know, like like Nate said, we talked to this guy who this is this is the son of the, of the gentleman that was there and, and and did this and said that they have all the letters they have they have photos of this guy. This is not this is not there's a real guy. You can look him up. And here's the letters back home about all this weird stuff that happened, and it's just a it's a crazy story because Roswell is really like one of those seminal moments in yeah, in uh, ufology, yeah, right? Yeah. Like because. Initially, the government, or not saying the government, the, remember the media then was different, right? It's not like now where we have this podcast, right? And everybody has a podcast, everybody has social media, and everyone's interconnected in such a way that you have literally millions of different sources of information you can go to, right? Yeah. At this point, you don't. You have TV, maybe. I remember being a kid, and you had like five channels when I was a kid. Yeah. Maybe six channels. I would change them for my, grand, for my grandfather when he asked me to go up and change them manually. And then you had a newspaper. And so the newspaper initially prints this, and you can go back and check it as as a spacecraft coming mm-hmm. down until the military shows up and then there's this whole no- counter narrative of it being weather balloons. And a lot of people hold to that now and say, Oh, it was just, you know, it was just, weather well, yeah, balloons. that was the, that was like the, the side story. So the, the story gets a little stranger. So he's telling the story years later at a, uh, I think it was a boy scout f- like campfire. He's telling the story. His son's like 12 or 10, somewhere in that, that vein. And, um, one of his friends was at the campfire, like overheard the story. He goes, oh, my dad knows about this. Went home, told his dad, and then he invited their family to his house. And he was a government advisor. And he said, um, yeah, I know exactly what happened that day. And so this guy said there was another part of the story that was told to him that not only did he get the piece of metal, but he saw he saw it crash. He saw the plane or whatever it was, the UFO crash. Whoa. And there was two aliens there, and they were telepathically communicating to the government, like I guess the the MPs that were there trying to figure out what was going on. Crash recovery. Yeah, yeah but but he heard it in his mind, and then um, this guy was corroborating the same story, like over a decade later, and said, "Yeah, um, we were told." about the same thing and one of the guys when he started telepathically communicating when he shot shot the gray alien right in the head and only i think only one of them survived but um so i guess par- apparently this trapper was close enough to hear telepathically what was happening too oh my gosh and then his friend's dad's confirmed this years later and uh only because this was like just a random i mean you're a kid you're going your more mission you don't even know i think yeah i think they're like 18 19 yeah 18 i mm-hmm. think is the and he's just riding home to his parents it's like bizarre story and i think that was like the coolest part and there's this photo we'll, we'll post it it's like him holding up this bobcat and it says department of interior this guy paul and uh he was a real person actually people in our members group were were doing some sleuthing today trying to find more details about this and they want to try to find a family member to like 
corroborate the story, but yeah. But so we have two separate people saying that there were two aliens there at least. One of them was shot, and they were telepathically communicating with everyone sort of in the area. And he made a joke about, is it like a reply all? Everyone can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like an airdrop. Yeah. Like yeah, everybody yeah. In the, if you're close enough, you can get this meme. <laughs> One guy saying, like, I don't hear it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not it's, getting it. And so we've been... We've been that part of your brain doesn't work, the, the, the nerd in the group. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah. I, I'm not in the group chat, guys. <laughs> I just the it's volume's fine. low. <laughs> but you're telling me you don't have pictures of it, but the, the we have trapper, all the, the trapper made a sketch of it? So his dad made a sketch of it. Okay. And they couldn't the, find it. The Mormon or yeah. the trapper? Yeah. yeah, the Mormon. Okay. So he made a sketch of it. His son said he couldn't find it. But he's got the picture of the trapper. He's got the picture of the envelope, the and dates, the, letters. the times, the addresses, and yeah, the and the letters of him describing it. So we'll 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 give that to you guys and you guys can post it or we can make a reel or whatever. And then yeah. um but it's kind of a unique a story, you know, because we had L.A. Marzulli on our show recently, and he said he took a team out there, and they were, they took a metal detector in that area where it crashed, and they were still finding little pieces of shards mm. of, of this strange kind of aluminum. It's not like it's in that sort of vein, but it's not like any other metal we have here. And so the, the question we've been talking about a lot on our show is that like, you know, a lot of Christians listen to our show. And they don't think that this stuff is physical. They don't think that there's any physical nature to it. It's all spiritual. It's all like, hmm. you know, it just disappears. The well, it's like manifestations. We had a uh, yeah. we had a, an exorcist on our show, uh, Father Martins, who has another show called The Exorcist Files, and he's like one of the top exorcists in the Catholic Church. And he, off the bat, without us really even asking, talks about how you know uh, UFOs and and all that's just it's just man- manifestations and, and only the person that's there sees it and they have these huge things to go for cities and only how is that if only one person sees it but we've sort of been diving down this road and developing this this hypothesis that that isn't the case um, not if you are to believe folks like like this story or like Ellie Marzulli finding finding pieces or if you're to believe that this whole last 2023 was a wild year right we had all of these House Oversight Committees now in our Congress with whistleblowers, with legal protections, talking about yeah. recovered craft and non-human biologics. And you can take yeah. that for what it is, but we always have to remind folks that like people will, will get on tangent and say, this is the government saying that, you can't trust that. And it's like, this is actually the opposite. Yeah, like yeah. NASA and the government, those entities are saying, there's no proof, there's none of this is real. Yeah. We have no evidence. But these whistleblowers who have legal protections, unlike people like Ed Snowden, when that didn't exist before, yeah. now are saying this is what's happening. And and I think in some ways they're 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 patriots because they they think that they're saying the American people should know about this because there are factions or, or factions within the government and non government factions. If you were to believe this with these whistleblowers like David Grush, they're saying that this is not only do the does the the government and its cohorts, because I'll say a lot of this probably stuff is off of, they're not, they're not three-letter agencies necessarily. These are, these are sort of like military-industrial complex entities have have stuff. And that is a mind grenade for a lot of people in in the Christian in the Christian circles and Christian faith because yeah. then all of a sudden you have to sort of wrestle with this idea and how does this fit in. And that's like the third time we've heard on our show, I want to say that this metal is, in, is intact and it can't be... It can't be messed with. Like we we brought on um, this this lady Tina. She's got a show called Counterculture Mom, and she was just talking about when she was in Hollywood as younger. Her producer told her this wild story about how her her brother worked for you know one of these government agencies and went down and he he's like, hey, my uh, I know my uh, my coworker's not going to be there today. You want his you want a security badge? You want to come with me? He's like, <laughs> yes. So he gives him his, his coworker's security badge. He goes underneath and they're trying to cut into one of these things and they can't. They can't cut into it. They can't figure out how to get into it. And the sa- Bob Lazar said the same thing on Rogan's show. Yeah, they they don't know how how this metal, you know, how to mess with it, how to basically reverse engineer it. And they spent all this time trying to figure out how to, how did they how did they make these things. But you know, I think L.A. Marzulli talked about it. She talked about it. And then this this story, which is like a one of a kind story, which is kind of what we we're always trying to find these these interesting sort of like little anecdotal stories that kind of really, and this one had so much corroborating evidence. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which you don't get on, on with a lot of these stories, yeah. but you have, you have also, the time. Why would they lie? Yeah. Like exactly. what, yeah. what incentive do they have to make up this story yeah. to continue it over and over for years and years? Like that makes no sense. And if, and if like the density of the metal is like a recurring theme, like yeah. how is yeah. that weather right. balloon? Like it's it not. doesn't make sense to have something that dense, that heavy. 
It's not. And I think Andy makes a good point too on this one, right? So this guy's writing letters back to his family. This guy isn't like going and, and trying to. He's just a kid to write a book or get or get or get a, get on the a radio show in those days or news shows or make a name for himself. He's literally just communicating back to his family these things that are happening on his mission trip. Mm. Yeah, and and I, there's so much credence to that in my mind because it doesn't even make any sense why yeah. you. And I think there's a lot, you know, in our spaces, right? I think there's a lot skeptics. There's a lot, there's a lot of skeptics, but I think there's also yeah. a, a lot of things where you can as you said, you can sort of gauge people for their uh, motives or motivations, right? right? And yeah, yeah. And if you can't, can't come to a real reason why people would have a motivation to to fabricate, um, propagate something that is that is false, uh, then you have to lean in towards it probably being true, right? And and that's kind of our show. The crux of our show in Blurry Creatures is like, if is your mind open enough to to consider these things or can you open your mind to consider these things? Right. Because I think the knee jerk reaction of a lot of folks in, in, ch- in church and in, in, in the Christian community is just to throw this all out. Like, ah, it's not real. Ah, this is demons. Ah, this is just, uh, this is fake. That can't exist. It's a psyop. Right. And, and I think what we've been trying to do is unwrap this in a way that says like, no, not at all. Like this can all fit within the, the yeah. fences we build around our faith. In fact, we just need, in fact, little bigger, bigger fences. Like, and you look at the Bible, and you look at the, the, some of the weird things that happen there. And that's something that Anthony, you you do. Um, I dabble. You dabble in that. <laughs> you dabble. But there's so many interesting, odd things within within the Bible. But also, there's this very real um, paradigm of supernatural or um, the spiritual realm, whatever you want to call it. But you can't avoid the fact that there's a ton of physicality to a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, that's those yeah. are the questions that come up. Like, where are they mining these metals? Are they from here? Yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, are these metals from here? Well, you guys, you you had that guy on talking about the pyramids. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. His whole his so we just had a re, uh, this guy Land of Kim. He was he came on our podcast. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Jeff Drum. He was yeah. talking about American how guy lives in Egypt. Yeah. Go that ahead. they were using pyramids for chemical plants, producing certain chemicals to strip mine and fertilizers. So they could build their their empires, which makes a lot of sense because if you look at the pyramid, it's such a, a complex structure. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for it to be a tomb or anything that's been the modern narrative. It is a, it is some sort of ancient tool. And so his whole thing was like you can, you can scientifically prove that they were they were producing chemicals in these things. And he had a lot of theories about why. But you know we hear about a lot of the on the show that they were going around the world. Um, there's copper mines and there's connected to giants in like places like Michigan. They're building things with metal, so it's wondering like you know Christians are uh, have to sort of put this in their their paradigm and kind of unwrap it. Like, who's making this craft? Where are they making this craft? Yeah. Why are they making this craft? If if angels can just appear and and disappear, and if all these spiritual beings can do whatever they want, mm-hmm. which Luke and I kind of after doing the show realized they can't. You know, you're you're giving godlike qualities to lesser, you know, create spiritual. I guess created beings, created beings. But you know, we're we're somewhere on that totem pole, right? Yeah, they're maybe a little higher than we are, mm. but they can't just do whatever they want to do. Yeah, and they need materials like we do, and, and they're going around. Yeah, mm. and so are they coming here to to get metals? And I think that gets into a lot of like the ancient alien stuff, and and the, and I think they have a lot of bad historical data to kind of prove their point. I think that the Anunnaki and some of those ideas are just, that's just the Sumerian version of like the Genesis six event. And yeah. they, they sort of like create their own little narrative with like more of a Marvel spin to sell books and to get people yeah, to yeah. have like, okay, yeah, we can believe in these ideas, but we don't have to include God. Yeah. And well, I mean, exa- cause like, that's exactly it though. Right. Yeah. Like every, every culture, they have their own narrative of like the fallen angels, basically right, sure. so star yeah. people or it's the Anunnaki or yeah. whatever. Hmm. But the Anunnaki, like one of their things was like gold mining, right? Sure. They came to mine gold and stuff. Like that's like one of their things. Um, I, I think it's interesting, right? Because gold's interesting because it has, it has a lot of value for uh, for uh, for humanity, for us, right? And it's because it's rare. But from a technological standpoint, if you ever look into what gold does, it's fascinating, right? You actually need gold for technology in the same way that we need uh, silicon. And it, it's part of some of the more advanced technological things we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, yeah. you can kind of play that idea into some of that as well. I, I think, and, and what, to your point, like it's, there is all these narratives across civilizations of these, in, of these, these higher beings, you know, 
that come and, and they it's it's the Graham Hancock thing, right? Where because in the same way Graham Hancock doesn't acknowledge the Bible and doesn't acknowledge God, but there's these enlightened travelers. There's the and really it's a story of the Watchers, right? It's these these Elohim as 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 the Bible says these angels, if we will. That's just a job title, but when they when they fell, they were they taught humanity and the Bible talks about this. So it was the book of Enoch. They taught humanity how to do stuff, technology, how to build, how to, how to do metalworking, how to do architecture, how to cut roots. And you, it, there's a whole list if you go down through it. And yeah, and that exists across cultures, right? And so what's been construed and what Nate was saying is that like a lot of these cultures then replaced Yahweh, replaced God um, and put their Elohim or in some cases the serpent at the top of the, of the, of the totem pole. And it's exactly what we see in Deuteronomy 32, eight, yeah. right? You have the divide of the nations and, and God divides the nations on among the Elohim. Those, this is after Genesis six and after the fall and those, and those mm-hmm. angels are then imprisoned in Tartarus and the flood happens and the giants are, our giants are wiped out. The Nephilim are wiped out, even though they're thereafter. So they show up again. It's a whole other part. There's a whole other story, but God then divides the nations, <laughs> takes Israel into himself. And then, and then there's another rebellion. This is what and we had an episode with uh, Dr. Joel Matamale called The Three Rebellions. This is the third rebellion up until the time of Christ. And what these angels, these Elohim do, is they're given governance or, or the princeship over these nations, and then they accept worship. And so in that way, they are, again, propagating the same. It's the same story. Yeah. They decide they want to control. They want to be worshipped. And then we have all these gods, this pantheon of gods, these gods across all these all these nations. And I think for a lot of times, even before the show, Nate, for me, it was just like, this is just mythology. People just making, making cute stories up. But when you take that and you look at what the Bible says about the angelic rebellions and the value of the nations and you look at the, at the gods and you looked at the fact that ancient man wasn't stupid. And I think sometimes we get in this paradigm that, that they were dumb. Well, they call it the golden age, yeah. which is interesting, right? Yeah. And you have the bronze yeah. age. So these ages are connected to different metals. Yeah. And I think the golden age probably... To me, it seems like that was the, the height of technology in history. Mm-hmm. I think that the technology they possessed then isn't like anything we understand. Um, well, if you look at the Vedas, right? Like the, the, even the ancient Sanskrit, the Hindu holy books, they're talking about flying machines and mm-hmm. what sounds like yeah. UFOs and really? stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, so that's, Hindu- what I'm, that's what I'm reading into right now because we were doing a little bit of research, getting ready to talk about Mount Kailash, I think is how you, I don't know if that's how you say it. Yeah. Have you, have you guys heard of that? It's, uh, it's like in, I think it's in Nepal, it's in the Himalayas, but like China and Russia won't let anyone climb yeah, it. But I've heard of that. They're yeah. like, they're saying that that mountain, someone, it was the Russian dude who like tried to travel up it, didn't make it. He was like, that's not a Drago. Maybe, maybe. I don't like, <laughs> I, <laughs> Ivan. Yeah, I must break you. If but I die, I, I die. He was he was saying it was if like he dies, he dies. <laughs> they were saying it was like artificially constructed, but then when you like look into like some of the Hindu stories around it, they're like, well, that's where like you know from the heavens. It's like uh, their Mount Hermon. Yeah, yeah, descended and like they believe Shiva dwells there now. And yeah, so Shambhala this, this mountain like in there that I heard about. This past week, or actually like three days ago. This is different than the one we thought was a yeah, pyramid. Yeah. So supposedly yeah. this mountain, no one can summon it. And when you climb it, when you climb it, you age yeah, yeah. drastically. Don't know. Right? It's like but like supposedly it's like protected now. Like it's like you yep. you're like banned from they climbing this mountain. Yeah. That China will not let anyone uh ascend the mountain. No one's done it. 900 years ago, it's rumored that a Buddhist monk um, did it, but that's just a legend. He aged in I reverse. Did a, I did Benjamin, ben, ben, yeah. he aged it. Benjamin James. <laughs> but I, I was just like, when I was like looking into the story, it was Benjamin James. I'm, I'm always the skeptic. Like I'm looking into the story. And yeah. Without fail, these things start with someone descended from the sky. Yeah. And now there's this knowledge, and because they believe that city Shambhala is inside that mountain then the russian dude said this isn't human made he described it as a pyramid it's like man why do all these stories sound no it's just exactly wild. it's same? wild that like i feel like just like the evidence is out there of just like dude there's so many things just throughout the world that all match up like the pyramids and like the reading of the heavens and serpents and like 
the these beings coming down from the yeah. skies and the it's caves, like, the people, the stories of the Native Americans and the giants. giants. Like giants, you, yeah. we, got, we got like Patagonia to yeah. China, Sol- Solomon to Islands, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, all it's the, everywhere. Yeah, all these it's like these stories match up, and and, and I think it's just it, it's hard for when you do a show like this, you kind of realize like um, you have to ex- kind of expand like your understanding of it, and I think for whatever reason, I think we just have a like everything is spiritual, everything is supernatural. I think that's a better way to look at it. And they, you know, they have to travel from point A to point B like we do. And they build stuff. And there are factories. Yeah. There's a there's an assembly line somewhere. Whether that's underground or that's, you know, off planet, I don't know. Yeah. What is, it, I mean, the assembly line is a great concept. Well, there's like angel, means, we got the angel bakers, right? We, did we talk about, did we talk about yeah, man on, on the last show? We did, yeah. yeah. Well, think about that. Like someone made, yeah. a, uh, made a joke in one of our channels about how there's angel bakers up there just making manna. You yeah. Know, they're just, they're yeah. just baking bread. Tossing it out. Tossing it out. It's, uh, it would, they'd be $5 donuts here uh, yeah, in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, they I th- would. What I think interesting <laughs> is interesting though, because, the, and I don't know what the answer is to what you're talking about, but there's, it's fascinating because throughout history, people met with, their gods on top on, of mountains, yeah, on a mountain, and, yeah. including Moses. Yep. Yeah, meaning with Yahweh on top of the mountain, right? And then you have the watchers descending on on Mount Hermon, and you have Jesus in the Transfiguration yep. on top of the mountain. Abraham. It, the, so something about Mount mountains, Sinai. Is, yeah, Mount Sinai. You have these interesting things that happen on top of mountains, and mm-hmm. now remembering that story we heard. Um, gosh, we were talking. Nate is one of our episodes. I, I think it was with Doug Van Dorn about Peru, where they were happened to be up at. I believe it was at Machu Picchu. You remember that story? Where they're talking to the to the guy there that's like a shaman, and he says he goes up on top of that mountain by Machu Picchu, and he meets with. Oh yeah, w- meets with. That was calls, like a watcher. He meets with like a more or less. So yeah. He meets with a watcher up there, hmm. and they converse. And it's like this is so weird, and also Mount not. Shasta as well. I don't know about that. You said you said you got a a guy from Hawaii coming on the pod soon. Yeah, yeah. ask him about the Polly Lookout. All right, it's like just the amount of like. Like I'm not over spiritualizing it, but like when you go to these places, it just it feels different. Like this mountain that I get to climb, it's like a popular tourist thing. It's not like I climb something epic, but just like the amount of wind that travels up this thing on this lookout is like heavy. But how tightly it ties into their faith and yeah. their stories, it's it's crazy. Well, and remember this too that like the that the pyramids themselves are right are effigies to mountains, and, and then we talk about like the Sumerians and the Babylonians and they're building ziggurats. And what they actually believed, but they were building these tall buildings, like the Tower of Babel was a ziggurat, and for example. And these were functional in the sense that at the very top of these, there was a room. And in that room, they believed that they would, they would commune and meet with their God at, at the top of these fake or effigies of, of mountains. So there's something very strange and odd well, to I, that. But I think that's probably what Eden was. I think it was some yeah. people theorized it was on top of a mountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How the how the rivers and all that flow into it, I don't know. But that you know, obviously if if heaven and earth are colliding, anything can happen. Yeah. But that is where, you know, humans originally were communing with God, but we were still here. So it was like this space in between. And so well, Tim maybe Mackey. Yeah, when we had Tim Mackey yeah. on the show, we talked about like Eden being the com- confluence of yeah. heaven, heaven and earth. earth, right? Because you walk God walked with right, Adam and Eve right. in the garden. Yeah. So you have this overlapping of realms. But I, I love that you were calling that out, though, because I think that that's uh, for people reading the Bible, Christians w- that draw a hard line between spiritual and physical. I'm like, there's just so many examples. Yeah. You talk about man, you talk about even the risen Christ and they're re-emphasizing he's eating. He's eating. like he's doing physical things. Yeah. Yeah. And people so are, you, yeah. And, and, you know, and Thomas is touching the scars on his right. holes in his hands. Right. right. And he's yeah. He's also walking through walls. So there's something really crazy. There's something. <laughs> right. Like yeah. where you can manipulate matter, dimensional, whatever you, however you want to talk but about. Well, that, you look but, at, but look at Philip too. Didn't he transport? Yeah, I like love it's that like story, so it's like dude. I mean, like that's almost like a godlike feature right. being somewhere transporting yourself. So it's like not only that was through the spirit and all through God, but it's like but you wonder about the function. Could angels could do that. Picked up on a UFO because there's a lot of. I mean, if you think about yeah. it and. If you think about it in real practical sense, he could have been transported in some sort of vehicle mm. because a lot of time people will say they'll have time 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 slips and things won't make sense. They'll be they'll be abducted, they'll be put back and things aren't right. Or they'll be put back in a different place. Or or now, even just like like sort of portal ideas, right? Like where yeah, you have you space and time, like a, a Rosenberg Einstein bridge or Einstein Rosenberg, whatever the whatever 
order that is, but you have this idea where you can connect two spots in mm. in time, right? And so I don't know. I mean, it could it could be like that. It could well, I'm be just a, saying we like, talked about that for the on the Mount of Transfiguration. Dude, that's a that's yeah. a super Dude, cool. Dude, that blew my mind. That like when I heard that theory for the first time, like just being able to like Jesus, like and the disciples and Pete, like and and, uh, and Elijah, Elijah, Elijah and, and Moses, Moses, like yeah. just like being able to like if they were able to like it was in their like, present time. <laughs> yeah, it was just is a wild like. Like the like it was all like, in there like, in like time, the idea, but it was like, all yeah, yeah, yeah like, like Moses of, on like Mount Sinai and like Elijah and Carmel. We have three I mean, stories, that would just be, but it's one moment in yeah, connected yeah. time because yeah, they sense. all talk to God on these mountains, right? right? And so Jesus was on this mountain. Yeah, and then also like I mean, well, the cool thing about that mountain is technically that is Mount Hermon. Yeah, most most yep. people believe. So, you know, is Jesus shining on the mountain to say, "Come get me." Yeah. You know, like he's sending out a flare, like he's shining, like, oh, no, look at him. He's up there. We got to get him now. And uh, I think it's cool. Well, uh, the cool thing is you have the law and the prophets. Right, the icon- iconography there is yeah. very intentional. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With associated with those two guys. And, you know, um, I, I do think I, I just I think it's really hard for a lot of people to put into perspective that, you know, we are not much different than the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven could feel a lot like this yeah a place with mansions and yeah. roads and streets of gold and Walls. they're eating and right. they have kitchens and they have people who have jobs yeah and they have to get from point a to point b like we do and i think most of the time we realize on our show is that you know pretty much everything humans do it isn't like a new idea it isn't a novel idea we're, we're, we're very we're not so creative after all. You know, we kind of <laughs> yeah. rip off heaven. I mean, look at the way that our governments were for thousands of years. Very much like kings and qu- where did we get these these concepts, yeah. you know? Why did why did we want a king? Mm-hmm. And oh, we get it from the kingdom of heaven, you know. And I think that I think there's just so many things we've done over over the history that we don't we don't really know their origin, and I think that if you if you go back, you can realize that they're borrowed. They were borrowed. Did, this knowledge was given well, to I, us. I have a question. Do you think yeah. that throughout history there's conversations like this or they either didn't even think about it or they knew about it? Does that make sense? It's like these conversations that we're talking about like the beginning and like the spiritual realm and stuff. Oh, like, I think it was, I think this was a, a an abject re- reality. I think we are kind of rediscovering some of this as 21st century Western Americans sitting here, you know, post enlightenment, academic paradigm, uh, scientific method, you know, imperialized measurements. I think we're kind of rediscovering. I think, I think honestly, you know, we talk about Mike, Dr. Michael Heiser a lot on our show because Mike was a friend and also yeah. really an inspiration for our show. But, you know, Mike really always hammered this home is when you read the scriptures, remember these were written by someone in a time in an ancient time period to an audience or to someone else in that same time period. And they would have understand understood completely all the nuances, all the cultural sides and, and, and a lot of the stories, which was why I think we talk about Genesis six is where our show ends up. It's just Genesis six, four, just like one verse and doesn't explain much after that. And that's weird to us. Yeah. But at the time it was written, you got to think that everybody kind of knew about all that. And I don't think they, and I don't think that the ancient peoples divorced, the natural and the supernatural in the way that we do. Mm. And, and I think that is the difference. So our paradigms are, you know, we're kind of, we're having these discussions because we're sort of rediscovering. And I think in some ways, yeah. maybe rewind our, the way we think to think, you know, ab- about the way that our, you know, our faith is based on, on the, the biblical narrative and that it's 66 books and they were written by, in an era by, the inspiration of God, but two way people group that understood all the nuances. So we talk pre roll about things like, like the, like friends or lost or Mm -hmm. all these movies, right? This is all requisite knowledge that we have. And we wouldn't, if we were writing down, we have to explain it. We don't have to, you know, unless you're talking, you're telling them we're joking about movie references. If I'm doing a movie reference to my wife and she hasn't seen it, I got to explain that. Right. It's like, we have to explain the joke. It's it's never good. But a lot of times when we're talking about things, there's all this requisite knowledge that we have Mm -hmm. culturally that we all understand. And and I think that nuance is missed when we read ancient texts because we're not ancient peoples. Right. Yep. And oftentimes I think that's why we kind of get it wrong sometimes is we try to read ourselves into the Bible as twenty first yeah. century Americans and like 
that isn't the reality or, right. or it's not even about us actually. You know, it's, it's not. It's, Unless it's about, you get Trump's new Bible, God bless America. <laughs> you can go to ninjasofbutterflies.com to purchase one. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by God bless <laughs> Donald America, Trump. Donald Trump Bible. <laughs> just, uh, just Donald Trump in general. <laughs> but do you, I mean, I, but I, I think the ideas that we ta- that we're talking about now, like trying <laughs> to be. understand. Yeah. That is a very human thing that I, that I don't think has ever changed. Yeah, no, I, I love it because it's like Dusty said, it, I don't know if it was on the podcast or the Patreon episode, but he's just like, you know, it talks about in scripture, like when we're when we're getting closer and closer to the end, the veil starts getting thinner. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's ultimately what my question is. It's just like, obviously you guys don't know, but like it just it seems like it it, it is getting like the knowledge and just like discovery of these conversations and stuff. It's like I mean, like my parents weren't having this these conversations like I, or like you know you know what i mean yeah it's we, just like it's an interesting time period it's almost like we've yeah. been stuck in sort of a time capsule and we've been kind of sheltered from the way the the ancients would would uh, see the world because i mean we've we've discovered on a show they're all building the same things like you were talking about yeah they all had sort of this blueprint on how to like build an empire you get a pyramid you get a bunch of people you have a god you sacrifice things to it and then you have some sort of you're Strange, getting something yeah. from it and um, why would they all be building the same things? And why are they? Yeah. And why are they building them all over the world? And who told them how to do that? Mm. And how to build this stuff? And and even and if you what's told, the reason? Even if you got everyone together at the beginning, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. Does everyone understand? Got it. Went out. Even if the knowledge, the plan of the knowledge of the plan was already implanted, yeah, it would still be so off. Yeah. Well, or, so or, like or you could say that that's what happened to Babel. You could also make that argument that like they all had that. Yeah. Everyone spoke the same language, and then yeah. God scattered them, but. Again, that had to come from somewhere, right? Why were they yeah. building this giant ziggurat? Mm-hmm. And they were doing it to war with God, but how'd they know to do that? Like, mm-hmm. and, and then you look at, I think, the rebellions that happened before, and you realize there's this knowledge that's passed down. And, and I, I mean, sometimes we, I think we talk about all this passed down of, of, of knowledge from, from the watchers, from the Elohim, as the Bible calls them. And, and I think there's a lot, you can end up in a space where everything is, is, is not original. I think humans have the ability to create. God gave us that. We, have, we can be very creative, but... I think the Not idea, like Hugh Ross, though, because Hugh Ross said, "Yeah, humans can build the pyramids." Yeah, I, but I if mean, you but if you look at the complexity of these things, where well, I was getting there. You didn't yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to say that's. I, I, I don't. I just. Don't, I think there's a. It's like an eighty twenty. Yeah, like you know, I, I think people people can can do amazing things. But I don't. I don't know why we're still hung up on the like. Well, yeah, it's not a tomb for kings because it's like you look uh, at the inside right. of these pyramids. It's like there's shafts and there's like. Well, so, so we had Jeff Drum like, on. Yeah. He, he was talking about like he, what was the, the click for him, and he's not a chemist, but he's got the channel called Land of Chem. And what he said is he went to the Red Pyramid and it smelled like ammonia, and he's like, "This is weird." And when, when he when he deconstructed the pyramid and they looked at it, basically said that the the way that it's built, the chambers themselves actually actually are the exact same proportions to the way that they make ammonia now. So it's chambers on top of chambers on top of chambers, and, and I'm not a chemist, so I can't remember how he explained it, yeah. but he had he had yeah. actual had an actual chemi- chemical engineer look at all his work and then de- and then basically deconstruct it and say this is actually right. But he said the way it's the proportions are actually and the design is right to make ammonia, and and then he goes and so it's fascinating because I never heard that before. You hear about power plants and what are yeah, these yeah. things? You make a good point though, but definitely not tombs. Yeah, so like, well, actually it's just like let's move past look, that. Look at, at the value point, of the kings. Like, I mean, like, so yeah. they buried all the kings in the valley of the kings, and so yeah, so somebody who was you know a, a very um, go get her Pharaoh was like, no, 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 I'm going to be buried in that thing. And I think that's kind of how it happened. And then it's the idea that, you know, once you have tradition, it cements itself. Yeah. And so what we found out, we found mummies in there. So this has to be a tomb. Well, it, yeah. it, it, it really feels like every single empire that ever existed was like a rip off of heaven, you know? So they tried to do the same thing that they knew yeah. happened. Just heaven. replicating it. Yeah. They're yeah. replicating it and they're trying to build you know, heaven on earth. It's that heavenly knowledge. Well, that's the golden yeah. age. That's the lie. We can we can have heaven down here. We can mm. do it just like he does, but we don't need God. We don't want you. But we do have our structure, and we do sort of have our our person on top, and then we have all the things below it. And I think that we've we've discovered that on our show is that it's just everything's kind of a rip off of, of yeah. where yeah. you it's get counterfeit. I mean, the darkness always yeah. counterfeits the kingdom, right? It, even up to the end, we'll, we'll know there'll be an antichrist, which is going to be the counterfeit of Christ. Yeah. Right? It's, it's always... A counterfeit. No real original idea. And what's fascinating yeah. too is that like that we interviewed some some 
ex witches that came out and got saved. And it's one thing stuck with me, Nate, that, that one of them said unburnt, unburnt, unburnt. Wow. Yeah. If, they're, if they're, they weigh as much as a duck, then they're made of wood, and then you burn them. Yeah. <laughs> um, Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. But what she said was that like that when she was doing these occult practices that that she would have real sort of abilities to see things that happen in the future and then they would happen. But she said without fail, every one of these, if you call it a prophetic thing or a fortune telling or whatever it may be, whatever, whatever she was told and shown that happened, it always had this hook in it. It was never good. Mm. So what, what the, what she had tra- when she had trafficked with these entities to see the things that, that, that were ahead, if these things came to fruition, there was always this big hook that was to the detriment to that was literally death wrapped up in wow. in this prophecy, if you will, right? Yeah. yeah. And for so a while for it's me, fun. Yeah, really for a while it's fun. fun. Then you realize it's to it's to your it's yeah. John ten ten for the for you know for the thief comes to steal, yeah. kill and destroy. And and I think that is a micro picture of the macro, which is that what the kingdom of darkness does is it, is it it counterfeits everything in the kingdom, and it 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 wants to look like it, but it's always like a a cheap bad version of it that ultimately leads to destruction, right? But and, they and knew what it was like. It was yeah. like they knew what it was like in their home turf. Yeah, and they go to a foreign country and they they try to like sort of rebrand and redo what they did. So they have it in their DNA. Like I, we kind of know what this looks like. Yeah, we kind of know how to do this. And so that's why I think around the world, and you have all these 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 guys like Graham Hancock, like how, how, they must have got this knowledge from from outer space or something like that. And it's like, well, kinda, yeah, kinda I think it's did. Easier to remove it. That's, I think yeah. it's easier for it to be like definitely millions and millions of miles away. It's harder or, to wrap her with like it's coexisting in the same space in a way that's like well, it's palatable for a lot of people, right? They don't, they don't they don't want to talk about God, but they can talk about aliens. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. that and that is that I can I can do that because that doesn't require anything of me right right because if you if you have to acknowledge that it's god and these yeah. things and the bible is true then there's a, then that requires something or there is a source there's an ultimate source where it all comes from it all comes yeah. from one source if in and i think that's where we are as a society i think a lot of people a lot of young people are starting to move past the, the ideas of evolution they're starting to like realize that you know things are too complex things we we know the complexity of creation now we know that things are organized and put together and in, it's not this this old school thing that we've been told where everything just kind of slowly evolved and you have these complex machines that came from nothing and but I, but I do think the source is is God and I do think that that is why they're trying to replicate it they're trying to rip it off but but they're making things and I I think the hardest part that that we see in our channels is that people will say oh it's just deception and you're like okay they're building they're building like you know, Ford trucks in the sky and flying them around <laughs> to deceive you of what? Like, what are they trying to deceive you of? Yeah. And and oftentimes they're not trying to be seen. You know? Yeah, yeah. They're they're doing something in secret. And like like we when we interviewed David Politis, he was talking about how they're taking animals. So why Elk. are they why are they taking animals? Yeah. Wh- how That's is what that? My mom d- said it happened to our dog. <laughs> <laughs> you told Haley. me that's not true. Yeah. Did he go to the farm? That's a great way to go to the farm. Was palatable. He was taken by aliens. They took him. (laughs) We went to feed. Went to let him out. And just they boom. He was foaming at the mouth, and then you know there was a loud gun sound, but that was unconnected. (laughs) I think it was. It was the disconnected. It was the tailpipe of the UFO. (laughs) It was a Ford. Exactly. It was a Ford. Yeah. The factory that was just had a blown converter. It was a Festiva. I don't know how I feel about the jobs bit, though. I don't. What job am I? Because then I wonder what jobs are we all going to get and what might we do? And oh, then I man. get a little worried. Are we doing casual Fridays up there? What's what, the after, after this? Yeah. like if We, we already were, decided before the podcast. That's, well, that's you, a you were going to be taking care of drunk people. That's, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. right. That was, the, that was like the intern program. <laughs> Making yeah, sure yeah. they don't die. Yeah. What, do, what do you think you're going to do? What's In your heaven? job? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have New no Earth. idea. You have a good, you're going to have a gig. I think... Uh, you're just th- going to sit around and goof all day, Andy? We need we need productivity. I mean, what kind of activities are we going to be doing in heaven? Lo- that's going to help me understand. Like, what are we going to be doing? Like, how could I help? Could I be a crossing guard? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> on the streets of gold? <laughs> streets of gold. As yeah. long as I could dance, there are streets. Yeah. I could look yeah. real good. There are streets. Yeah. I could be a good crossing guard. It'd be fun. Yeah. It'd be great. That's a better way to think old. about all of this, though. That yeah. is like the better way to think about this. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is a place. Yeah. You can go there. 
Yeah. And um, maybe these UFOs come from there. I don't know that we're going to have jobs. I think that's that's a current state. I don't know if we're going to have jobs. I, I think there will be things that we do do, do, like do. To, for enjoyment. And we will do do. <laughs> Is there poop in heaven? That's the question. No, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good question. <laughs> that it was a Bible study. I was in middle school. Really? And someone said, do you think we poop in heaven? <laughs> and he said, well, I don't know, because I kind of enjoy pooping. So like maybe it's Whoa. like... All things for the good know. of those. You know? Yeah. Well, they talk yeah. about in... Uh, I think we do. Every good and perfect gift. <laughs> Dude, I've been to the hippie hostel. <laughs> yeah. They compost their poop and they grow veggies. I think that's... Okay. That's they have. That's the the like watchers I, gave them that knowledge. I feel like <laughs> just hey, don't flush that. <laughs> Grow so, it, that's please. A I feel bit. like our resurrected bodies are going to be pretty pretty Poopless. good. Yeah, yeah I, think I hope I'm as tall as Luke and Nate in on this new earth. I hope I'm still cool. I hope I'm still yeah. taller than you when well, we get up there. <laughs> that would be cool. I'm going to be nine feet tall. <laughs> so the whole concept we did talk about this with Alberino on our show. The whole concept of Jesus saying, "I'm going to prepare a place for you." The only other really source that you can tie that to is of is in the Book of Enoch itself, talking about these mansions. Um, and that's like, that sounds really physical. It sounds like there's you, you're going to need a house. You're going to need some place to stay. All these people are coming. We yeah. got we got to prepare. We got to build. Hmm. And uh, when Christians think about these things, we just think. Oh yeah, he could just whip it up like that, and they're just going to be there. And it's like, well, no. I mean, they're construction workers. Are people yeah. laying foundations? And why are we building these megalithic structures down here? Yeah. Where do we learn? Why are we building stuff out of stone? I mean, think about some of these structures. They're incredibly complex. There's so many other easier ways to build them. So is that how they're building things in heaven? Are they using yeah. this geometric? I mean, he he even holds a masonic title, the chief cornerstone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like. There careful, careful with the Masonic, Masonic stuff, dude. Yeah. Well, they yeah. just rip off from heaven. <laughs> well, well, and so does the New Age. Everyone well, rips off, yeah. I, yeah, like the spiritual laws. It's probably all way. geopolymers, though, if we think about it. They're probably just shaping <laughs> stuff. Messianic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Masonic. Is that what you said? Masonic. Like, like masonry. masonry. Like, like uh, brickwork. Oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like carpentry. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he was a carpenter, man. Marana. Classic Masons. I, I heard one dude talking about, and I don't remember if I talked about it with you guys on the last time you were on, but and I know I've told you, but how the chief cornerstone, there being a singular cornerstone, only yeah. makes sense in a pyramid. And so if like all of these like... I don't know. It seems like a scheme. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> Several levels to that scheme. How deep are you guys in this <laughs> Trump Bible sales? <laughs> yeah, but if you get involved and you get your friend involved, you gotta get in early. This <laughs> podcast is brought to you by pyramids. <laughs> pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I totally just disrupted your thought. Yeah, it was funny. I can't no, it's an face. idea. It's so a good idea. Scheme. No, like like ziggurats or this story about the mountain in the Himalayas where. Yeah. They, they're calling it a pyramid with some sort of like deification trying to build something in its interior. I was like, if that is a cheap knockoff of mm -hmm. what the new heaven's supposed to look like. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting that like the geometric ideology lines up. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's, I mean, you know, they've never found the cornerstone for the White House. Did you know that? Mm -mm. It's lost. What? There's, there, there's a conspiracy theory for you. What do you mean? They've no. never, they can't what? find it. So, when they built the White House, yeah. they laid a cornerstone. We have photos of it. White House burned down. Don't, I don't remember the year. Don't quote me on the year. Oh, but in uh, part of the reconstructions, they looked for the cornerstone, and they can't find it. It's not there. What's the conspiracy behind it? Well, did someone take it? Where is it? It's not where it should be. And is there significance to it? George like, Washington, I believe, laid the cornerstone. So there's, oh, there's some. It's whoa. like Nick Cage value to this. Yeah. Like somebody might have it. Hmm. But back then, who knew like that, like that type of knowledge stuff? Like we would never know nowadays. In the past hundred years, how much information has passed on? It's like, yeah. but back then, it's like, who knew what was happening in the, like in the new America and like the beginning of this country? Yeah, you didn't know. That's scary so you stuff. Have, yeah. So I mean, I think that a good way to think about that is that the knowledge was at the height, and it's slowly been getting worse. It's been getting more concentrated to certain individuals, but for the most part, most people don't know how to do anything now. Yeah. And I think that there was a time when people understood sort of the cosmos, how how it was wired. Deities, they knew they knew names for these these entities. They yeah. would call them certain names, and um, all the cultures sort of had a framework of understanding 
okay, humans are here, but there's other th- there's other characters in the story, and they're involved in our lives, and we can either make friends with them or we can ignore them. I think there were very few human beings in ancient times that were outside of some sort of spiritual system. Yeah. I, I don't think that you had that ability. You couldn't yeah. just... Well, I mean, you don't really hear about like ancient people being atheists or agnostic. It was like there was always like a, yeah. a higher being or nihilists you know? yeah and it w- they weren't stupid for being a part of that yeah i think they were actually getting something in return yeah for whatever they were putting in and i think that ultimately it was never satisfactory ultimately it was always sort of to th- to their detriment like luke was saying a minute ago but uh nowadays we're also skeptical and we believe that the ancients were stupid and then we're actually smarter but if you look if you look at these little clues about how much knowledge they did have you quickly realize that's that's not a really good argument because we don't even really know yeah what how they did a lot of things. Well, and we talked about that in one of our podcasts. Uh, the the dude that took over the Smithsonian of like how incredibly racist he was towards Native Americans, and so like when they were making these discoveries, he'd be like, "No, they weren't smart. They were savages. They were yeah. dumb." And like so, like not true also like yeah also not relevant so who knows what was just taken out because it's like who cares yeah it's like oh no that in fact the native americans they were communicating and like interacting with people all over the world Mm. somehow we don't know and all all of our history was written by unbiased and you know very kind and very like you know you know people allowing just like very perceptive of everyone yeah no it's just like no man they were they were highly advanced yeah they had I mean, you just look at like the Mayans and the Aztecs, like, I mean, like the structures and like the roads, the stuff that we're discovering within the past 10 years, you know, massive. It's insane. It's like, it's super interesting. I didn't really think about that, but we were, my wife and I went to the Met this last year. I think I was talking to you guys about this recently. And when you look at like ancient Chinese art, I was like, this is sophisticated. Like we, I, I think a lot of times you're like this, this notion, which I didn't even think i would have identified as like in here that pat they're they're dumber they're they're lesser right but then you look at the stuff they're creating and you're like there's this is this is unreal like this yeah. is yeah the the time frame in which we're saying this was created that that doesn't even i don't even know how to begin to process that. yeah and i think it's interesting that the sort of the trajectory we, we live in now the explosion of technology since like the 1940s to now is is insane but the i think the abilities of people or on an opposite, you know, like we, and I say this because we, there's woodworking that was done in the Victorian era in pre 19, you know, pre 1900s that we can't do. There's not a person yeah. alive that can do it. Yeah. There was a video that went viral recently. I saw they were taking part in this Japanese house and there was no nails used. on. Yeah. It. Dude, that stuff trips Whoa. me out. Yeah. Their joinery was insane, yeah. dude. There's stuff that we can't But that's do, what's so right? cool about like those, those cultures that are, they're so rich with like keeping up with tradition, like the Japanese, like, they still have it. It's probably a little lost now, but like there are techniques of like building homes with like their joinery and stuff. But like now, like in America, dude, it's just like we've just we've lost. We forgot so the, much. Like the, the the handicraft, and I think some, yeah. some people are scared. This could be a tangent that that's what's happening with AI, though. Right, the rise of AI is now making movies. It's making music. Yeah. it's writing books. It's going to write screenplays. All these creative, artistic things that that. Hum, the humans have been able to do that we're, we're losing it, it now in, in the same really weird sort of revolutionary way it is being replaced like we we lost a ton of of fine of craftsmanship and fine art abilities with the the onset of the assembly line mm-hmm. yeah and and the specialization of 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 manufacturing right and general ford we're in a weird position right now where this could be happening again. I know people are trying to take protections for this, but yeah, you've got crazy things where AI can make can make movies. Yeah, AI can write songs and not only write songs, but it can sing it in whoever voice whoever voice Frank Sinatra, Chris Stapleton, yeah, Lil John, you know all the greats. So um, <laughs> those are the greats. <laughs> those right are there. the, 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 so the greatest of all time. Frank Frank Lil John, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Yeah. Lil John. Are here's a question, guys. Then are UFOs getting better? No, yeah, yeah that's like, a great. I've, do they I've, advance I've technology? Yeah, like, are they are they building their more? technology? Yeah. somewhere, a alien wife is complaining that they have the old UFO. 
Exactly. And that there, she's in car line to pick up the aliens. She's got she's the like, Chevy Capri. Insane. No, <laughs> she, Shelly and you know Shelly and Ken can have one, but we can't. Did you know I'm yeah. talking to you with my hand because our Bluetooth doesn't work on yeah. this? <laughs> Looking at Shelly up there, listening to a podcast. Having to probe everyone by hand, <laughs> manually. Some people still enjoy that, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the craftsmanship. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. An art. it's an art form. It's Come dying. on, let's not give up on this, guys. <laughs> Somewhere. Someone's complaining they don't have the most up-to-date UFO. I'm <laughs> certain exactly. of that. Exactly. I mean, it's like, these are the concepts. I mean, if, if we're developing our technology, then they certainly are developing their technology. And uh, some people think it's just like a modern holiday, uh, holiday, Hollywood sort of concoction. They just made it up. And then UFO sightings are only in certain parts of the world. But actually, you know, you look around, there's a lot of... UFO activity in Mexico, yeah. here, oh, okay. um, around the, certain... The Vatican. The Vatican has a, has a thousand years of... Uh, there's a full section yeah. in the Vatican really? Library of UFO encounters and, and, and high strangeness. Or like when in... It, are y- Something weird happening at the Vatican? What? That's, no <laughs> way. Not happening. Or if like it, we're seeing a little bits and pieces of a different time. You know, with UFOs, are they in? The, are they in the same time frame that we are in? Mm. Yeah, jeez, dude, that just blows You're, my mind. My <laughs> mind is melting. Why? Like, are they? Is that, are, are, <laughs> Dad, it'll feel so good. <laughs> These are like so. Dad, I learned about interdimensional it's, beings. It's not that the UFOs <laughs> like disappears or leaves. Yeah, it's just no longer in the same time. Yeah, it's not where it's when. Yeah, it's when. Because time, it, time it's is when, Marty. Because time is tied to gravity, right? Einstein, maybe someone correct me. <laughs> you have Oop, a lot the, the, of listeners that are going to be um, fact checking you. Well, you need a fact checker. Factors in Listen, the theory of relativity. Not our podcast. No, nah, we have a podcast. You we need one. Now. Say whatever you want. No, you need one now. <laughs> you just like you no. guys are fact. Yeah, this is what this happens way. when you get a million subs on YouTube. You have to have a fact checker now. <laughs> It's just part of the deal. No. See, the thing is we get our information from TikTok, but we have millions of views on TikTok. So it's like this circular so we, feed. Oh. So we are the information. Going you, yeah. They're going to us. So what credited? I heard this somewhere. <laughs> oh, it was me. I heard a smart guy. <laughs> oh, look, it's me. There I'm will, the Einstein now. <laughs> dude, there will be a point when we've done so many shows that we start to be like, I heard a thing one time. Yeah, and it'll like, just be a thought we had. Or yeah, like, that was on our reel. <laughs> once said. Oh, what do you guys wait. think, though? Are they making these UFOs here, or are they making them somewhere else? Well, that's inter- I mean, it's interesting because, like, you think of like you talked about like the streets of gold and stuff. You know, like, is there? And I also think about like Job and the meeting of the heavens, right? So, like, when Satan came up there, like, so God's like, "You've been what a story back and forth on Earth." Yeah. So, are there in fact more planets that have these heavenly creatures? You know that are, I don't know. You know, like right. so, like I got a theory. I mean, because like I mean, these plants, like we know, like yeah, the, yeah. Moon, the moon has like uh, elements in it, like cheese. Uh, cheese, it's very rich in cheese. You said you guys said that the, the moon is rusting. If the moon, it uh, is. If the moon was made of cheese. Metal. Would, would you eat it? Learned that from TikTok. I would. So <laughs> credited. I would. I would. <laughs> I'd wash it down with a tall, cool Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I I, I don't. I wonder if I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, like, I mean, who knows? Like, we. I'm my. I'm. I like I the s- underwater idea. That, I like the ocean. That's yeah. a good theory. There's that's a lot. Of theory. I like. I'm because there's really a lot of stuff one. coming out from it. Yeah, but I mean, they're they're building them like underground. U- uh, USO. Underwater, the USO. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, w- couldn't it be possible that there's a they got all snorkels? They, they got like <laughs> in the earth. Why? In the earth, under know. under the water. There's, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of. The orcas are like a form of mob protection Warren for Hall operation <laughs> down there. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a factory at Atlantis. So orca, they're, orca, they're building orca. Their... <laughs> or Hollow Earth. <laughs> that, How yeah, do we feel dude. about that? Okay, hey guys, follow up. Hey, don't don't cancel us. But what do you think about Hollow <laughs> oh, Earth? Oh yeah, the Hollow Earth stuff. We were just did an episode on that. It's pretty wild. It is wild. Isn't that what's happening in Gorilla versus Kong? That yeah. they go to Hollow yeah. Earth and fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a place. It's a place to do it. That'd yeah. Be, yeah. I'm, so are the metals are the metals made here? With some sort of mix. I mean, if or we're talking about, are like they the foreign? Are they not from um, from Earth? I think they're time jumping. That's or is it a combination? Like, yeah. are they, like we, you talked about the pyramids and like the chemists and like the the stripping of whatever materials yeah. or minerals. Are they like combining a bunch of stuff to create these things that can, in fact, travel inter 
dimension. Well, well, I mean, the, like <laughs> meteors are like, you know, a lot of them have sort of this metallic feel to them. And, yeah. And a guy just told me a story at a Easter barbecue I was at the other day, found out what I did and he started telling me a story about this, this, they thought it was a meteor crash into like the, he was in Ohio and it crashed into the ground and it was like this long pencil lead piece of metal. And he said it, the, the shape was strange and then it had these weird rounded edges and colors and it, he said he couldn't really, he'd never seen anything like it. Took it to school one day. His friend gave, his friend found it, gave it to him, and he took it to school one day and then went back home and put it in a shed in a paint, an old paint can. Hit it. He's like, I lived in rural Ohio, basically on some like farmland. My dad was working all the time. He would have never known it was there. I put it in this paint can, put it on the shelf. Next day I came back to show my other friend, and it was gone. Something took it. And so... You know, kind of reminds it That's just wild. Yeah, and he's just like hmm. this is, and, and he just told me this story, and he had a bunch of other weird stories, but um, you just wonder sometimes of like little bits and fragments, little pieces of this technology kind yeah. of hits our, and they need it, and they're looking for it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but it seems like they're coming here. They're coming here from somewhere else, and I yeah. don't. And people go, "Oh, it's interdimensional. It's interdimensional," and I'm like. What does an interdimensional being need a craft for? What does it need a car for in, in, in their realm, you know, like in their space? Oh, if it operates the same as ours, then they would need to travel there as well. Yeah, you can't go through a car wash on a motorcycle. It's, well, that's fair. You could. That's true, yeah. Remember you that, could, kids. But you <laughs> remember that. You get really It's physically soapy. impossible. You but you do get a clean bike out of it. So are our body. Are, are our dimensions like a car wash? And yeah. they, they they need yeah. that car. <laughs> I think so. They need the car to go through the car wash. Our dimensions are a car wash, and there's a Boy Scout group trying to get to camp. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Chapter two. <laughs> Chapter two. Josh's book. I mean, if they do make this stuff on Earth, maybe it is something that, like, one we haven't discovered, or it is, like you said, a mix of, like, materials. I don't know. That would well, be I mean, just like, we're discovering stuff daily. Like, the it was in a Wyoming or something, right, recently, where they... The they discovered it's the uh, is it cobalt? What's the buzzing? Do you hear that? Mm -mm. I don't hear anything. Oh. It's probably that pedal you have, Bigfoot voice. Yeah, it probably is. Um, I think it was like in Wyoming, it was like cobalt or something that it was like X amount of trillion dollars worth of this mineral that we just discovered in the U.S. Oh yeah, I remember hearing that. Oh, I saw yeah. That yeah, yeah. So it, it's just like it's a huge thing, hmm. but like. Yeah, I mean, like, you think of, like, the pyramids and stuff, like, they, they probably were doing that same thing, where they're just going through and discovering these minerals and materials that they needed. Yeah. Well, that's why, what, why do they need that's them? What, well, that's what Jeff Drum contends, is they were creating chemicals to strip mine yeah. the, the Gaza Plateau, and there's evidence of that. And then they go, what? It? Which is fascinating to think about, like... They need metals to do something. They need it for, yeah. for, for what would you assume to be production, or... Well, is element 115, you know... That was the element supposedly that was powering these anti-gravity spheres, according to Bob Lazar, right? And they 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 prove that that's not that element is not from here. Yeah. So hmm. you can't really manufacture that. Yeah. That's not a it's not a mixture. That is its own unique element on it. And so, it, do you think we'd ever be able to reverse engineer that stuff? Like if the military ever got their hands on that? They stuff? are. They have been. Okay. I think they have been since Roswell. I think Area 51 sprung up around Roswell. The event they needed they needed something they really got mm -hmm. secretive at that point. And then we had that tech. And so, you know, a lot of people contend, "Oh, we didn't go to the moon, but we had had alien tech for a while there." So maybe we did go, and maybe we went for a different reason. What do you guys think? What are your personal beliefs on? I, I do think, we go I or think, and if so, I think if <laughs> we why? I think if we went, we definitely aired the Hollywood version for us. I think the government never really tells us why they're they're doing something. There was some reason more so than just bankrupting the Soviets. I think perhaps they there was something on the moon that they wanted to go investigate. Um, you know, a lot of people, sh sh you know, they upload these videos and it looks like something's things are going to and from the moon now. Yeah, yeah. Are they are they investigating something? I mean, clearly, there's a lot of data that shows that. You know the tech that we had at the time wasn't possible. It looks like, it looks like a, it was shot in the New Mexico desert. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. I understand why people think we didn't go, but I wonder if that was just, hey, we're gonna go, but we're not gonna tell 
anybody why we're going. We're going to air this version. I mean, they do that all the time with mm. everything. Like when this event happens or this person didn't show up at this event, and it's like they'll give us whatever reason they possibly yeah. can just to keep control the narrative. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the government stages things that they're supposed to be at the White House, and they're obviously not. We've seen the sets. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I don't know. I, I kind of can go either way on that. I, I'm sure he did, but I don't. I don't believe it's when we, you know. When it happened, like it's, I don't think there's a whole lot an alien of base on there. the moon on the on the dark side of the moon. There's an alien base. Yeah, it would make sense. That's why we're not going back. Like yeah. why it's like I like, think that actually like the fact they found maybe found something they didn't they didn't intend to find. Yeah, yeah. is mm. makes a lot more plausible sense of why not that the technology was lost or we can't do it anymore is that we're choosing not to do it or we're still doing it. Or we're still doing it and people don't know right because yeah. NASA has yeah. this massive budget that yeah. You know, I, we're not exact. There's not a little of oversight over that and what's what's happening and where it's going. So, I don't know. I mean, yeah, what's their main goal? Maybe the moon's made of that material, and that's why all the craters are there for. Because that's, that's why it's rusting. Holes. They're just digging holes. Hey, they're taking elements. solved. Digging holes. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. But yeah, Great. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. that you know that's the complex thing, and I think a lot of people have to put it in their minds that the way this this technology works is unlike anything. It's not moving. I think it's moving in time. So yeah. they could technically come from far away and get here quickly because the, they're not, it's not like, you know, like Hugh was explaining on our show, he's like, you know, if we send something out into space, if we send something out, it's moving through space, but they're moving through time in yeah. space. So it's a completely different technology. It's a completely different way of traveling from point A to point B. And I think you have to factor that in with the anecdotal evidence that we do have stories like Bob Lazar you know, this guy coming on, guys like Ellen Marzulli, we're finding the metals. So you have to piece together. Yeah, we don't have like a blueprint of how they're building this stuff, where it's coming from. Yeah. But we have enough evidence at this point as Christians and as people of faith to say they're building physical things and it's not human beings that are building them. Are, is the government reverse engineering these things? 100%. They have been. And like we brought on, um, uh, he was an ex FBI guy and he was saying, look, his whole way is an easy way to define this is think of UAPs are probably a way the government is distinguishing the difference between our UFOs, the ones that we've reversed engineers, <laughs> and then ones we don't know are UFOs, actual yeah. UFOs. And if that comes out, maybe that will be the government's call to say, hey, you know, let us know. Or like, you know, like they'll be able to be very aware, like what's ours, what isn't. And yeah. And be, you know, I don't know, just. Yeah, that was one of ours. That was the TR3B or whatever they say. Yeah. You know, it's it's more the triangle one. That was one of our guys. And when they see something we don't recognize, yeah, yeah. people get picked up and people go missing. And you can yeah. see some of these UFOs. They get sent around. Some of these look really bizarre. They look like viruses. If you magnify them, float, you know what I'm saying? If you if you zoom mm. in on a virus, the way they're like circles mm. and they've got all this weird stuff coming off of them, but they're in the sky and they're, I mean, we get to send this stuff all, all the time and I'm always looking, I'm like, that is the most bizarre looking thing I've ever seen. Mm. And if it's real, why would they build it that way? And they do look convincing sometimes. And there was one that came out of Mexico that a bunch of people are like sitting in this parking lot and they're all filming this thing yeah we talked about it it looked like it was just like a almost like a seraphim kind yeah. of like looking like with the like a big like eye yeah thing in the middle and it's just like yeah and if it's yeah. if, if that is like an entity or that's a craft i mean it looks like a craft it looks like some sort of you know physical s- structure but the way it is designed and made i don't know it's bizarre so i i think that is uh what we talk about on a lot on the show is that you know, is it demonic? Probably. It's probably not good. Yeah. Like, it's not a good thing. But also, it's just, that, that but, yes. But, like, hmm. at what point with, like, within Scripture, like, when these guys, they were before the throne of God, and they were seraphim and cherubim, they thought they were going to die. So, like, there was a fear and vote in it, you know? Like, so, like, I guess, like, I mean, it's God, I think, will distinguish it like if we encountered that but like are the like some of these scenarios that they're encountering like could it be a heavenly being that we were just like Bleh! but it's just like it's in fact could be the good guys yeah yeah you know yeah, yeah, so yeah, are they, they shooting they each were other all down. afraid of gabriel yeah i mean like everyone was afraid like, of i mean they were yeah, terrified like, they were like right surely i'm going to die right yeah and if you saw that thing in mexico i'd be like yep i'm dead well, yeah. Look at all, yeah that's so terrifying 
the diverse species and in, in here could be just the same as heaven. There could be as many weird creatures there as there are here. Mm. Yeah. And there are a lot of weird stuff, you know, we that we still discover here that we're like, we didn't know that thing existed. But I, I, I think that, you know, it's always better to to allow for more stuff to exist than less. And I think that a lot of people on our show, if if some if some data comes out that um sort of blows their holes in in and whatever th- you know, a lot of it is the shape of the earth. So you, they can't have any data that... Well, it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> what shape is flat? I don't know what that... <laughs> but, but, but they can't have any data that, yeah, yeah. that because they've made they've, they've set up these, these rules. Yeah, yeah. And so any data that comes outside of the rules, it's demonic, it's spiritual, it's evil. You're being deceived, and I think that's dangerous because you're not allowed to be... A I mean, it's si- you're not like- allowed to be a scientist and say, no, this is the data. This is what's consistently yeah. coming back. There are metals, and they're not from here. So where are they from? Well, they can't be from anywhere else because nowhere else exists. Okay, dude, that's bad. That's bad. Theory. Well, I feel I feel like we're in the time where it's like with, with with what you're saying is just like the data and all that stuff. It's like the human psyche is like we've never changed because it's like a hundred years ago, if a woman could read, you're like you're a witch, right? <laughs> so like we're kind of like at that point Burn again. Her. Yeah, Burn her. it's like. Oh, you can do arithmetic. She, t- she You're turned a witch. me into a newt. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I got better. I got better. <laughs> so it's like we, we get so confined with like our traditions of like way of thinking, you know? It's yeah. like yeah. let's well, break it. And there's a real like defensiveness too, like historically, like, right? It's the astronomer who said that the first one that said that we would revolve around the sun. And they thought that that was like disproving the Bible, so they like the they, church they like ousted him. this yeah. dude, kill him. Yeah, yeah. Instead of like realizing like, no, he was right first yeah. of all, and that doesn't contradict the Bible. Yeah. So it's yeah. just like, I don't know. I'm curious. Like, I I feel like we've been talking a really long time. I hate to like ask a question, but ask um, we'll, do, we'll do one more question, and I I do want to continue this on Patreon. Hot dog. I got a I got <laughs> a dog. topic for Patreon too. Yeah. Okay, this one. I'm curious because I'm kind of like these guys are like bad influences on me. So I'm getting like more and more into this stuff <laughs> yeah, like all the time. It. And I'm curious like the response from people. Like the expanding of it feels like right to me. Like it feels like, oh, that's good. Like that's there's more and that's interesting and there's more stuff here. But I do see even among like friends, you talk about it and they're like, Oh, I don't I don't yeah. like that. I don't want to talk about that. I don't I can't like receive that as even a possibility and then yeah. there are times where you're like bro the ocean's so you're telling me there's nothing in the ocean we don't know about and it's just like no nah, 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 i don't want and i think that's i don't know what you might attribute that to with with that sort of reticence to like i don't really get what you guys are talking about and it doesn't really fit in my view we get it all the time i mean we were we were making a joke this week about how we have like the protestants and the reformers and the catholics and the mormons and flat earthers and the agnostics and all the paranormal people like listening to our show all at the same time and nobody's happy Um, (laughs) you know they get they get mad at us i i think you have to do a show like this like a scientist you just you try to you try to remove your emotion from it Uh and you try to see well what is it okay we had 20 people say the same story Okay, there's probably something to it. If just two of them are telling the truth, then yeah. we have to we have to put this in the paradigm. People are like, well, that's not in the Bible, and I'm like, well, the Bible's not an encyclopedia. It doesn't tell you everything that exists. Yeah, you're reading it wait, wrong. Wait, and you have <laughs> hold up. <laughs> you know, you have you have you've set yourself up for failure, right? You know, and the Bible is a story of God redeeming humanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how it how it happens, and their highlights, mm-hmm. and that is what we have. We have a highlight reel. God reclaiming his people and putting us back into the family. We don't have a lot of, of other things. It's, oh, well. It's just the sports that are top 10. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like watch God's like, that's all you need, right? It's like, you don't need to know like everything. Right. You don't need to know the right. mysteries of right. well, heaven you, and earth. Bigfoot like, is not in the Bible. <laughs> here's, here's what happened. You guys sinned. We got separated. But my redemptive story is that I came to earth. I died for you, and now mm-hmm. through this people group, and here's the yeah. genealogy. And it's like that's all we need. History. That's, all, that's yeah. literally all we need. But right? you even get like. But little, I love talking about UFOs, <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. I, I think because we got everything figured out. We've got yeah. the important stuff figured out, and we know what we're living for. So now it's like, wow, well, yeah, this, gravy. this yeah. is fun. I, I think there's a reticence too within within humans because you know there's a thrice record called the illusion of safety, and. I, 
it makes me think that the reason I reference that is I think that there's there is a solution of safety we like to have that yeah. everything is very safe and we have complete control over that paradigm and it, it feels safe. Mm-hmm. And, and and I think that when you start to add things in, it can explode that. And for a lot of people, the knee jerk reaction is just reject it all because I have a very safe space, right? And my God fits in this box, and all I need is is my salvation and the gospel, and I'm good. And I, I agree. I mean, all we do need is the gospel, right? Mm-hmm. But what I think you miss out on in that sense is is understanding that that the realities that God has created is is big enough to to hold all of these yeah. all these things all this weird stuff and also to contextualize it. And so these things don't disqualify your faith. In fact, if we open up the scripture it and look, it. Yeah, I agree. It affirms it. I mean, for yeah. me, the Genesis 6 was was like a Rosetta stone. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't didn't need to understand that to be saved. Didn't yeah. need understand that to to have Christ some be do, though. my savior, right? But some, some do. do and I think what that does is it unlocks a lot of the Old Testament and it makes a lot of things make sense, and 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 for and I what I think it makes sense are a lot of stumbling blocks for a progressive Christian movement right now that wants to deconstruct because of the conquests of Joshua, because of the actions of God in the Old Testament, and if you don't have the the key to understanding these three rebellions that happen right and understanding the rebellions and what happened yeah. there, I, I think you miss a lot of the tapestry, the yeah, context. Yeah. And the richness, and also what it, it does an amazing, like 4D chess to the work of Christ. Mm-hmm. You don't need that. You don't need that. Yeah. But it is incredible to understand. Like in these, yeah. you know, we just went through Easter, and like you have Silent Saturday, you know, and these three days that, that Christ is gone, and, and understanding what he was doing there is always like, what was he doing, mm-hmm. right? And, and and Peter talks about he went and he went and preached to the angels in prison and, and you go, what is that? Well, if you understand Genesis six and the fall of the watchers and the imprisonment in Tartarus, you go, Oh, he's not preaching. He's also just, he's just declaring his victory. Right. Yeah. And he goes and rescues those that are in Abraham's bosom, right. Out of, out of Sheol and brings them into, into paradise or the garden as, as the Greek word. Right. And you, these things all then start to plug in and you yeah. go, Oh my gosh, like this is the most incredible story. And because we have all these, these, these angelic, um, Elohim, these these um, heavenly creatures walking around, interacting with humanity in the Old Testament, then that paradigm in itself can start to unlock some things that we see now. Yeah. Right? Like, whether it be the UFO phenomena or like we talk about creatures and these things, you go, you talked about the veil thinning. Yeah. You provide context for it. And I think the problem is, is if we become so close minded that we, we, we want to stay inside this illusion of safety and these fences, that these kind of things if we don't consider them and, and they're not salvic, but if we don't consider them for some people, it can be that can, di- can disqualify yeah, their yeah. faith. Yeah. yeah. And they'll say, you know what? Church doesn't have it. And those yeah. people, church doesn't have it. Then I'm going to go to ancient aliens. That makes sense. Or yeah. I'm going to go to someplace else to find that answer. And the world is always more than willing to disciple you in the way it wants you to believe. And that is never in line yeah, with, with with scripture or with, or with with they're, they're or, full or, of or the Christocentric. It's never Christocentric. Yeah. It's never about Christ. It's mm-hmm. always they're full of wrong answers. And it's yeah. funny because some of those people will actually know more history about like the Jedi than they than they do their own Bible. Like they, yeah, they're you know what I mean. Like they know, oh no, the Jedi they don't they don't they don't practice that, and they and they know like the history of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm guilty of that. There's so many things where I'm like, man, how do why do I even spend time? Yeah, 1980s baseball. Spending, name the yeah, starting lineup of Oakland days. Who do, what who are do you we want? doing? Carney Lansford playing third base. Yeah. But if you talk <laughs> about the Bible in the same way, like you know the history of it, you know the details, you know these people group, and you know, okay, well, actually, there's the Canaanites might have been this offspring of this other thing. Yeah, yeah. And when they're described as being, you know, 40, 50 foot tall, it's possible because of this, yeah. this, this, and this. And they're like, what? Bro, you're crazy. But in your own life, you're a nerd about something else mm-hmm. that's not even, it's, total, it's pure fantasy. And you're like, well, this actually has historical <laughs> context. We can actually dig, we've actually dug up some of these skeletons. In fact, there's, there's this whole narrative over all these cultures, these giants were around. And uh, like Luke and I have, we've brought on just about any any interesting fact related to the giants on our show, whether it's historical context, um, you know, stories of of farmers digging them up, brought on a guy who dug them up and then got threatened by the education system. We brought on people who, you know, 
of all walks of life who've seen yeah. him. It's people who've seen him in yeah. like you know in Afghanistan, remote parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. one guy got one on. A, uh, he got one on a therm back when thermal technology was just starting to hit. You know, yeah, some of these soldiers in Afghanistan, and so it's 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 as old as time, but it's still going on to this day. And I think that uh, I think you should be a nerd about it. Oh I think yeah, you should be I a mean, nerd yeah. about it. For for me personally, like my spiritual walk and all this, like I loved Jesus. Like really. It started like when I was in tenth grade. Like I'm just like I like truly fell in love. But this past year, with just like diving down into like Michael Heiser and like all this stuff, Mm -hmm. it's like the only thing it's done has enriched everything. It's like it's like given more context to like the purpose of like Christ coming and like the the real evil that's happening in the world. Yeah, like it's it's just. like my brain's exploding, but the only thing it's doing is just enriching what I already believed was like Christ is mm. God. Like confirming, he's king, it's just know? confirming the I mean, truth. It's also like yeah. context, right? I think we, we talked to Dr. Joe Motamale on the show and he, he talks about cosmic geography as sort of a term. And when you look at the works of Jesus and the places he went and the things he did, you realize that there's so much more significance that's lost on us. We're, we don't live in the in the Middle East, number one. So we don't really, these, these points are, are sort of arbitrary and we've seen, maybe yeah. seen them on Google earth, et cetera. But you realize that it was all intentional, like going to Caesar, uh, Caesarea Philippi or to, or to Peneus there was not like it just like it's on the way they went and intentionally went there to the base of Mount Hermon and, yeah. and gave this very, and you realize that these, these things are all very, they're, they have spiritual significance and they have very cosmic significance because these are places of abomination. These are places where, where where rebellions happen and Christ is there and he is announcing his dominion, his authority, his kingship over all of this. Yeah, yeah. And those things are just are just amazing little nuggets that I think that as you say enrich the story. The story doesn't isn't made better. It's the most it's the best story ever told. It's the most mm-hmm. incredible story of all time. And we need that and nothing more. But I, I do think there that you can get caught in that place where all I need is this. And the problem with that is you get a lot of blind spots when it comes to well, we all do that. Yeah. What's happening now? We yeah. do that with the films we love. There's all these side stories. You know, they did it with, tried to do it with Harry Potter. They've done it with Star Wars. They try to fill in the gaps of like, the story's so big. And then they yeah. they add these like little like side movies to it. And I think that when you realize like what Luke's saying is like the context of like, going to the Temple of Pan, who is Pan? What did what were, what were they actually worshiping? What did they build there? Yeah. Oh, this is actually the gates of hell. It's not you know it's a, it's a literal place that they believe and they went there to to, to conjure sacrifices up and throw humans in there. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I think that's just you know lost on us. Yeah. To this day, and I think it's really important. And this is the point I I want to make. Why does this matter? Because if this stuff does show up. And you've had this spiritual idea that aliens don't exist, aliens don't exist, and then aliens roll into town. What are you going to do? Your faith is going to be shattered in, in a moment. You should have a faith that conclude, it can include all these things. So yeah. when, because a lot of Christians are going to be scratching their head, you know, if this stuff starts showing up. And why now? We're talking about it now. And eventually, you know, the veil will thin and these things will interact again. And Jesus says, you know, like the days of Noah. And I think the days of Noah were realms you had, you know, f- dimensions crossing over you had four dim- we are we live in this 3d space and i think if, if if these things live in the fourth dimension and they come into our world that seems to be what was happening in the days of noah so yeah. this stuff's going to roll onto the scene again at some point maybe not in our lifetime but it sure feels like it's going to happen in our <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it's it's like every Whoa! day every day more <laughs> it's it's like more videos more surfacing and ai is is pushing yeah. the narrative of human and machines going to merge and i think that that always seems to be when I think God gets involved in the human story when we start to create abominations. Mm -hmm. And if we can convert ourselves to non-human, I think that we're going to force God's hand involved into humanity. Because if I don't think God's going to allow, you know, most of the population to convert themselves into something that's transhuman. Yeah. Without, without warning him, them or stepping up because I think that's the temptation in our lifetime, the temptation to become transhuman, to just to compete, just to pay your bills, will be so astronomical. You, you, you know, if you could put AI into your mind right now, we could actually be having an AI conversation. I mean, you're just a regular human at that point. You're just a regular guy. You're, you're, you're going to be tempted into that. Yeah. But when the aliens do show up, they'll probably show up in Florida. 
So <laughs> definitely, the definitely. They're, they're going to be accepted. Well, the because, veil is really it's gonna be, thin. Have to be like and nobody in will notice. It'll be yeah. Nobody will notice. It'll be Florida, no. Florida man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, uh, the meth fumes from Florida is definitely, <laughs> the veil is thinner there. It's just <laughs> a, lot kind of ba- of a lot of bath salts. A lot of bath salts yeah, as well. There's actually a hole in the ozone directly over Florida because of it. It's probably an easy point to come. We just tan right under it, us Floridians. We look up. We um, put our reflector on. Got my meth tan. But I want to continue a conversation. You do. Right after this on our Patreon. <gasps> Patreon.com forward slash ninjas or butterflies. Download the app. It's, you can cancel any time. It's absolutely wonderful. You get brand new episodes. that We've been at, we're having this Patreon for months, guys. Yes. And you have episodes that you've never seen. You can just go binge watch them all. What? I, I know you guys want to go back to your families, but I want to talk about <laughs> owls. And I want to talk about the Federal Reserve. Oh, boy. Uh, hey, Briefly. Can I, can I make go. a pitch real quick, too? Uh, the, the story we shared earlier in the episode, it's actually one of our members' episodes. So if you want to join up. That's it. Plug, the, plug all your stuff. The Blurry yeah. members. Yeah. You can listen to this unique. On one. Patreon? Uh, we don't what have Patreon. Yeah, what is it's, it? No, it's, the, it's their their little it's membership thing. That it's on your doing. website? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Website. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you can go to blurrycreatures.com slash members. But we have like over, I think, 60 episodes now for members only. And it's worth it. <laughs> Do it. But uh, we, we find these like one of a kind stories and we put them on there. And, we, and then a lot of people who sponsor the show will tell their stories, whether they, you know, people getting involved heavily in the occult and some crazy stuff. We had one recently on Lucid Dreams, how she basically was learning how to leave her body to the point where she almost couldn't get back into her body. And it was this Whoa. crazy story. Um, a lot of, a lot of that don't like that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. hey, hey, for the cost. So maybe don't sus- the, don't do the memory. <laughs> you can skip that one. <laughs> you can skip click that away one. now. Yeah, you, you don't have to listen to all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some are fun. Like no, the guy, it, this this trapper finding this like you know. Yeah. And I, I will say, literally, literally for the cost of like a, a venti drink that you would That's buy. Right. Yeah, it, do it. Dude, not in I'm Florida because t- you guys eat, drink drink gas station coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We drink uh, alligator pee. Um good. But I'm telling you, sterile. Listen to blurs. I'm so. The the guests you guys bring on is just like it's so awesome. It's like thanks, man. Thanks. It's man. not you're not doing like a one kind of narrative thing. You're just you're doing this dude that's like, yeah, I shot Bigfoot. I've never read the Bible, and it's like this guy who's <laughs> like a theologian is like rocking your world. Videos just that just go like, viral. The guys like the guy that w- the sailor that was saw the mermaids, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, mermaid it's like, guy. Everyone saw that video and. No one knows what happened to him. They enter interviews. I so love what you guys. Please are doing. go check it out. And I love that we're friends now, and yeah. you don't have a choice in this. Same. Say, right. you are friends for life, and you can't change no, that. Dude, we, yeah. <laughs> so and you can't change that. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, gonna rule. we're all gonna, you know, take an oath, put our hands underneath our, our thighs, like they did in the Old Testament. Yes, it's the only way maybe there'll be some it. circumcising later. You know, yeah. we're, we're gonna, gonna drink. <laughs> we'll drink a shot of a gator, and we've been staring at Andy's thighs this whole time. <laughs> you know, he's more on Patreon. <laughs> Greet each other with a holy kiss. Hey, Go to patreon.com <laughs> forward slash ninjas or butterflies. Um, love you guys. Love, love you too. You. And uh, love you guys. Thanks for having us. Review on. us. Thanks for having us. We didn't do an ad, but you get it. All right. Love you. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Go to patreon.com right now. Did I say ninja? I meant the butterfly. You slowed down. One of God's ah! You were martial arts! Fuck ninjas attack! You don't even know. This podcast is brought to you by a Florida company and Florida men, Sunday Cool, where lots of Florida things happen.